Oh, you know what I love? Sports. I love sports. Sports, 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 sports. When it comes to Texas A&M. Where are you getting this information? Let me tell you. Welcome to Texas. I need to talk a little sports with you, Ags. David Nunez here with Texags Radio. Billy Lucci here on Texags Radio. Olin Buchanan. We will develop men. We will graduate players. And we will win championships on the field. The best way for us to win is to do it together. Do you realize everybody knows who you are right now? I think we're coming into this year with a new confidence. Schools are like, we're freaking Texas A&M, man. Like... That's about as pretty a throw-catch combo as there is. I saw the safety roll, the slot fade. I knew where I needed to put the ball. You had <laughs> no other option but one hand at that yeah, point. Yeah, man, 50-50 right? ball, I gotta come down with it. You know, if I'm betting on anybody, it's the Aggies. Well, here we are, face-to-face, -face, National Signing Day, part two. Kind of like part one because it's 24, but it's the last one of this recruiting cycle. Welcome into Tex Ags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers in the Rollo Insurance Studio. It is the go hour, presented by the warehouse at CC Creations. Maroon never looks so good with Maroon U. Today's National Signing Day show is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. We want to remind you to have fun out there with Academy Sports and Outdoors. So today is all about the Elko effect and how this class finishes out. Terry Bussey should be announcing here uh, in about... 59 minutes or so. We hope to see that he picks the maroon and white. Let's go to the Brian Foley Law hotline because Ola Buchanan is either there or on his way there to that signing day uh, press conference in Timpson. OB, good morning, buddy. Good morning. I just uh, pulled into Timpson. Uh, just found a spot right up what I think is the Timpson, uh, I guess, ISD building. Uh, so I'm finding my my way. I'm looking at the uh, baseball field, the uh, bear country with a big bear on there. Big bear. Uh, but uh, a big a big bear. But the biggest bear around, at least in, uh, maybe not literally, but figuratively in stature and reputation is Terry Bussey. And uh, a lot of a lot of expectations that he's going to, uh, that he's going to sign with A&M at 9 o'clock, but you know, that that LSU uh, is still out there, and old-time Aggies can still remember the old Harvey Williams Louisiana Purchase Day. So uh, until the you know, until the, the the letter is signed, there's always a little bit of uneasiness. I know a lot of people have watched uh, Terry Busty. For those who haven't, I guess OB for us to kind of illustrate the quality of player that he is. Uh, not only can he is he a dual threat player, he can play on both sides of the ball. But if Georgia, LSU, and A and M are the last three calling and the last three alive, uh, that tells you the quality of player he is. Yeah, I think he's uh, the recruiting services having like the. I think he's the number fifteen ranked player in the entire nation, five star, and all those things. But you know, I always say, who else wants him? Uh, Georgia wants him. LSU's been trying hard to flip him. Uh, and has been on him, you know, from the outset. Uh, you can watch his highlight tapes. Of course, they're highlights for only good plays, but he has so many of them, and he's very explosive. Um, yeah, he plays in, you know, small town football. I, I think I don't know if they're two A or three A. Back in the day, they were two A. Um, but uh, you know what? Everybody's got to be from somewhere. And uh, Herschel Walker was from what would be a one A school. You know. Uh, so was Rodney Thomas. Uh, I think that uh, you know you just look at the raw materials that this young man has, and of course you want to you want to bring him in and, and develop him, and you know let him be a great player for you, whether it be a cornerback or receiver or both, because he does have that kind of explosiveness and that kind of ability. Well, let's talk about the Elko effect, uh, Ob, because. I think all things considered, losing dudes, okay, doing so well in the transfer portal, and the ability to close out, uh, hopefully, with uh, Terry Bussey here in about an hour, um, a five-star guy who can play both ways, and to go along with all the other pieces they had, Mike Elko um, has passed every test up to now. Yeah, this is the final exam. Uh, you know, this is the... Uh... 
what do they call it? Yeah, final exam, you know, the, the, the end of the semester exam. Everything he's done, Mike Elko has done, has been positive. Yeah, did they lose some guys, they have some guys flip in December. Yeah, but you can't even put that on him. He's been the coach for a couple of weeks, and people react to that. Uh, plus, he's the guy that he's had a couple of months to work on, you know? So, um, is if if he closes out with uh, with Terry Bussey, then I think you give uh, you give Mike Elko, and this is the for, for the semester that started when he was when he was hired in December. Uh, this is an A plus day if he gets if he can close out on Bussey, um, because he will have held off he will have held off LSU first of all four guys for A and M who are committed to A&M have flipped to LSU. And, you know, he's trying to prevent the, the fifth one. Well, OB, earlier this morning, uh, Robert Borden, the uh, offensive lineman from Collarville, Tennessee, uh, did sign with Texas A&M. And, uh, again, they fill some needs on the offensive line. Hopefully they get the athlete in Terry Bussey, and there's still work to do there with Bethel Roman. Um, so, Ashton Bethel Roman. Am I saying that right, or am I mixing up the names? No, I think, yeah, I think it starts with Ashton. Yep. So uh, I think you got it right. Ashton Bethel Roman. But there's there's a chance for this to be a phenomenal late night, a national signing day with Bussy, with already Borden, and potentially Roman. Well, I think anytime you get a top tw- a, a, a player, if, if you want to be that guy that, that you know, follows the, the recruiting sites and things like that, anytime you get a top 20 player, uh, that's a great day. We're talking right now the difference between, uh, you know, an extra base hit and a grand slam. And, uh, uh, again, all the indicators are that A&M that is going to get the signature of, of Terry Bussey. That's all the indicators. I think I, I even heard that one of his friends on the Henson State Championship football team uh, is a brother of Nick Scorton. Uh, I, I heard that. So, so you know, um, he was he was at uh, it was in College Station on on Saturday and Sunday. I saw him at my favorite breakfast spot Saturday morning uh, with a, a a table full of what I assume to be coaches and recruiting staff. And uh, you know, that's always a good sign. You always want to get your last guy there. He's never he's never. Uh, you know, change his commitment. Um, so, you know, they're a great sign. But, of course, you know, uh, you still hold your breath a little bit until it's actually done because, you know, we've seen it happen before, not just at A&M, all over the place, that where you think, okay, uh, this is the this rubber stamp it and go, and, and then there's a snafu somewhere along the line. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, th- I think the feeling is the strong feeling is that that he's going to sign with A and M, and you know we'll see. By the way, Ashton Bethel Roman is not signing until later on this afternoon. We got a full day, Billy. Uh, excuse me, Ob, because we've got uh, n- at National Signing Day. You're there in Timpson, and we've got basketball later on to uh, to watch and cover tonight. So uh, busy day for you, buddy. You're going to be up all day. I am. You know it's but uh, hey, that, that's why we get paid the big bucks, right? So here are here I am at eight o'clock getting ready to uh, cover this Terry Bussey signing and and in twelve hours I'll be on uh, hopefully I'll be on my couch watching the Aggies play basketball against Missouri and uh, you know reporting on that by the way the Aggies are playing the black and gold Missouri Tigers tonight in basketball the Timpson Bears so so it's a Maybe a black and gold maroon day. Black and yellow song to come back with on this uh, Tex Ags radio show. Jerry Palm has uh, the Ags listed as one of the eight first four teams during the first two days of uh, the NCAA tournament. F- uh, the 11 seed facing another 11 seed, Michigan State Spartans. Joe Lenardi, by the way, has them as a 10 seed versus Colorado State in Indy, OB. Okay. Um Indy in the in in March is probably a lot like Des Moines in March, but uh, you know maybe if that's the case, 
if that's the case, maybe maybe Lucy will spring for us to go to St. Elmo's and have oh. one of those uh, big shrimp cocktails and a, and a nice steak dinner. I like Indy. I, I do. Even when it's cold, it's, it's actually not a bad town. Bottom line, though, OB, this team has an opportunity to get some breathing room, to get out of that maybe 10-11 seed. Uh, they've got some real big games, but it doesn't really matter if you go on the road and lose to Missouri. Yeah, you got to be from here on out. You have to beat the teams you're supposed to beat, and I would say that's Missouri, uh, that's Vanderbilt, Arkansas at home, uh, Mississippi State at home, uh, Georgia. You know, you need to beat those teams, and then you know, see if you can't pull off some magic like you did at the end of that last year and get a get a win over. Tennessee and get a win over Alabama and uh, you know win at Ole Miss, uh, which I don't think that'd be a miracle. I think you just have to play better than you did the other night. But you know South Carolina, you know you, um, and, and and that's how you can really improve your uh, your seating. But to a team like Missouri, back into wondering if you're even going to get in the tournament. Yeah, here's the question I have. As much as I want to see consistency and string together some wins, I think the way for me to believe that that's going to happen is by having multiple games in a row by Boots doing the Boots thing. And he doesn't have to give us 26, but he needs to be a very effective Boots, not the one that we saw earlier in the season where he'd have a good game and then be gone for a little bit. Right, right. And, uh, you know, you hope what you saw from Boots, especially after a week off, uh, a and M was off for a week, and then Boots came out and played great uh, in that in that win against Florida. Is you hope that's just the the turning of the corner? No, he's not going to go out and score twenty six points every night. But if he can be that guy that like he's always been, that gets you fifteen every night, and just is that that guy that uh, takes some of the pressure off Wade Taylor, and you know a guy that the the other your opponent has to start accounting for seriously. Um, yeah, that'd be a huge step in the right direction for the Aggies, which, uh, you know, you've seen the, the stat the, since he's been here uh, when he scored, when, when Tyrese Radford scores 20 points or more, the Aggies are 10 and 1. Yep. And a big part of that is because that's opening up opportunities for other people. And, uh, again, I don't think you're going to look for boots score 20 points every game, even though he certainly has the ability to do that. Yeah, OB, if I said to you, Wade Taylor's going to score 20, uh, Boots is going to score 15, Henry Coleman's going to get you 12, and then you get your normal performances for the rest of the crew, do they win that game? Yeah, yeah, you won. Yeah, you you win probably uh, the majority. Of the bat. You, pro- you probably win about, I'm trying to think right off the top of my head, uh, the, the, how many games are left. Ten? Is it ten conference games left? Well, they, they're five and they're, they're four and four right now. Yes, so sir. Ten conference games, ten left. games left. Uh, if, yeah, if you could do what you just described, I would feel like you're going. I'd feel like seven and three is very much uh, reasonable. Maybe better than that. Maybe a little bit worse. But if you did all the things you just described, I'm thinking seven and three, and you know you finish twelve and six in conference play, and that's outstanding yes sir considering you're starting if you want to be a part of the conversation this morning probably the best way to do it is by texting us at 979-693-1150 you can also try to call us up on the brian foley law uh, hotline 979-693-1150 ob stick with us for about another two or three minutes let's go around the room and say hello to the people as we say hi to nick savage who is behind the glass nick good morning buddy howdy good morning y'all what's up OB, I hope you drove safe and make it back safe and hopefully you get some, some good news there as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm locked in on, on 9 a.m. We're going to be glued to Twitter and wherever else. I'm sure it's going to be on Instagram or Kay could tell me how he's planning to broadcast it. But either way, we'll get the word from OB. And uh, like you said, uh, OB, that's, that's the icing on the cake. That's the final exam. And I think uh, Elko is going to pass it with flying colors. OB. I, I like your uh, your confidence. OB, I just want to give you, because I know you can't see, I'm getting a snapshot of the, uh, what do we call that room that you're in, Nick? What do the we call fish it? bowl. The fish bowl. And typically we got like Richard or Luke like going crazy in the background, like waving. 
right now it's kind of a very quiet, like, you know, studious crowd back there. Matthew Dawson making sure everybody can see his coffee. Justin over there Everyone's taking a grinding, sip. Everyone's grinding, man. Um, I, I, I see others in the back. I, my, my eyes are failing me at it's the Caitlin moment. Caitlin okay. and Cade. And Cade. Okay, there you go. Cade, uh, Cade's here too? Just kidding. Anyway, uh, they're a little quiet this morning because I think they're, they're all about the business this morning, OB. Well, there's a lot of business to tend to. I know it's not like uh, the December signing day, but this is a, obviously an important day for the reasons we've discussed. And so uh, I think anytime you're talking about recruiting and football, um, it's a big day. And let's, you know, a lot of guys need to be coming to work and being ready to produce. And uh, hopefully there's a, either way, we're going to be producing content. We're just hoping it's all. We're, we're telling the, you know, the the, the 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 stories with the happy ending. Aggies gather at the Angry Elephant, and that's where we go right now to the Angry Elephant News and Social Center. Eric Casares is in the house. Eric, good morning, buddy. Good morning, David. Good to be here. Obi, how you doing? Doing well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, uh, National Signing Day, busy day. Uh, we traveled to Boston this week for track and field, and then also they're in Clemson. So we're. It's going to be a crazy week, but I'm excited. I'm ready for it. All right, man. What news do you got for us this morning? Yeah, so first of all, obviously, I'll mention tonight, men's basketball takes on Missouri 8 p.m. That's going to be a big one there. Uh, I was listening a little bit to Buzz Williams, uh, the radio show, and he was saying that, you know, their their best parts about the game that last week against Florida was not, I mean, you know, we talked, to, they were talking about, like, how the, the calls were, you know, pretty bad in that game. The officiating was pretty lopsided, but overall, he thought the calls were pretty fair. Um, he was talking about like their best traits is to get to the free throw line, and they had a 22 advantage uh, going to that game. So it's a big game tonight against Missouri. Got to be looking out for that. Also, women's basketball Hold tomorrow. On, let, me, let me let me let me interrupt, Eric. Are you aware that Buzz Williams comes on our show, not just his own show, our show every Monday? Oh, absolutely. Okay, just absolutely. making sure because I, I, every once in a while it'd be nice for you to quote our show. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just well, with you. you know, but yeah, no, it's a big game, and then tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's win basketball is they're taking on Ole Miss at six thirty. So, uh, busy, busy uh, two days in basketball coming up here. Ob, any final thoughts here before we cut you loose? Uh, just uh, you know, let's just see if uh, we have some good news today in about, uh, I guess, be forty three minutes, and if and if uh, we do, then no matter what happens the rest of the day, it's a good day. Hey, OB, do me a favor. Let's just say Terry Bussey says, I'm going to Texas A&M. Afterwards, during your little one-on-ones and your interviews, would you maybe say or recommend going to eat at an establishment in Bryan, Texas, you know, that's not too far away from this studio? Well, I, w- I would. I would uh, go, you know, for me, and now in Tennessee, I have to go far, but I'd go, I would go far to go to Fargo. Uh, and if you need a reason to celebrate, and today would definitely be a reason to celebrate, Head on down to Fargo's for lunch and get that uh, big baked potato with the chopped beef on it. I love that chopped beef they have there. Um, but you know what? If you have some bad news and you just need some comfort food to feel better, go to Fargo's and get that baked potato, get that chopped beef. And then, you know what? If you're watching your carbs, uh, got ribs, they got all the other things you want too that you'd find at a, yep. at a uh, uh, barbecue joint. But today, special on Wednesday. Celebrate Terry Bussey with a baked potato and choppy. And they also have beef ribs on, on Wednesday, too. So what I'm suggesting the people to confuse our good friends there at Fargo's, Alan Melender, Maurice, all the gang, is to order, if he signs with A&M here in about 41 minutes, to order the Bussey beef ribs. Just order it like that. Hey, can I get uh, a pair of, or a pint of the Bussey beef the, ribs? The Bussey special. The Bussy Special, all right? Yeah, the Bussy Special today is beef ribs. Just say, hey, I need the Bussy Special beef ribs, all right? And if you want the baked potato, you can call it that, too. They've been around this community for 22 years. 1701 South Texas Avenue in Bryan, without a doubt. The what? That's barbecue in Texas, i.e. the world. I don't know if you know this little bit of information, OB, but that's actually their trademark. Because it's the truth, just like... Harry Bussey is the truth. It's Fargo's. Go check it out. See you, OB. You can hear Aggie baseball online at Radio Aggieland.
All right, back on Tech Sags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio, the black and yellow for the Timpson team. Is it Timpson Tigers? Let's go to the uh, Brian Foley Law Hotline. That's where we find recruiting analyst Jason Howell, who's there in Timpson. What, what's Timpson's uh, mascot? Jason, remind me. The Bears. The Bears, that's right. Oh, we just said it. That's right. That's, I'm just dumb. How, <laughs> how are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. I made my way down to Timpson this morning. Uh, I rolled up into uh, where the decision is going to be made, announced, uh, whatever, made official. Um, and, um, yeah, there's there's not a whole lot of uh, tips as to what's going to happen, where he's going to go. There's a big SFA billboard right next to where he's going to sign, but I don't think that's any indicator. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, – it's a it's a blank table with a, you know with a THS tablecloth on it with three chairs behind it. So that's what we got. <laughs> hey, so like understanding Terry Bussey's kind of like personality, like it's kind of low key, right? And this is yeah. it's been kind of a low key build up and low key event, correct? Yeah, uh, they they did a big announcement for his commitment and. You know, I think this is, you know, they're not going to do that again. I, I think they're just going to roll out the uh, the papers and let him do whatever he's going to do. And uh, and you may get a hat put on his head or something like that. But, yeah, this is uh, this is very fitting for, for a guy like Terry. He's, uh, and like you said, he's low-key. Uh, he likes the spotlight. He knows what to do in the spotlight, but he's uh, he's got that Barry Sanders kind of mentality to him. Of yeah, I'm just here. You know, this is this is this is life as we know it, and uh, it's it's no big deal. So he has not wavered on his commitment, um, but he is he has visited places, and there's some big places. What Georgia mm-hmm. and LSU down the, the down the stretch. Why do you think people are so worried about him flipping? Is it because the recent track record where Harold Perkins and others have gone uh, there to LSU? Well, I think, number one, he's just a big priority, and he's not signed. And you have LSU and Georgia given a heck of a push. He took official visits. He had, you know, uh, he had others in there. But, you know, as we go to signing day, he's – you know, he said, I don't know where I'm going to go uh, after his visit. So, I mean, yeah, there's reason to worry and wonder. And uh, so it, it is, you know, it, he's, uh, I don't think he's uh, trying to unnecessarily lead people on or anything like that. Uh, but I do get the sense that whatever he is going to do, he wants to make sure he's 100% ready to let it be known. Uh, before he lets it be known. And uh, that's the way he did it the first time around with his commitment. And uh, that's the feeling I get uh, about today. I've talked to uh, some coaches as, you know, I was pulling in the parking lot and, you know, they're, they're, uh, they, they don't know. Um, he kind of, you know, he, he knows he's got to play things close to the vest until he's ready 100%. Uh, because he knows the importance of it. Jason, are LSU and Georgia analysts there? Are there is is it that kind of vibe? Like everybody's there, or is it still kind of like? <laughs> well, I'll be honest. I, I don't think you're going to see Georgia or even LSU just because. I mean, Timpson is. It's kind of difficult to get to. Um, you got to be going to Timpson to get there, and um, you may see. I, right now, I'm the only one in the building. Uh, outside of a few administrators. Um, but I do expect to see your on three or 247. Uh, you'll probably see some of those guys here, and they'll be more regional. Uh, you may see it, you know, one of the A&M sites uh, here as well. But I don't think that's necessarily an indicator just because uh, sometimes those guys come like us. We don't know for sure you know, what's going to happen. And uh, they're coming to, A, get a story if it is A&M. And and with those networks, sometimes you get that story and give it off to to whatever site needs it. 
um, or to the national site since Terry is a five star and this is <laughs> this is uh, one of the bigger news stories of the day when it comes to national signing day. Hey, so let's talk about relationships with Dalen Evans and also also the the great work that uh, Holman Wiggins did with him and how important that is to Terry Bussey. Yeah, uh, him and him and Dalen, they've they've got a great relationship. He talked about how they, um, you know, they they text and talk, you know, back and forth. And I know he's got a great relationships with guys like Miles Davis and several of those guys that you know, have signed or are in that class. And, uh, yeah, uh, he's, he was, he's, he's been talking to those guys and going on visits to, to A&M and even some other places with some of those guys throughout the recruiting process. So, uh, there, there is a really good bond there. Um, and like you said, coach Wiggins, that was, that was formed when coach Wiggins was at Alabama, he was recruiting him for the Crimson Tide. And whenever he moved over, he talked about after. Yeah, he's probably the one he's got the best relationship with, but just because of the prior uh, relationship he had with him. But I will say this, Elko and that staff have done a tremendous job, you know, really uh, making him feel like a priority, you know, making him feel like a priority throughout this last couple months. Uh, they they sent multiple coaches. Uh, they, um, they sent offensive and defensive sides of the ball. You know, they've, They've done a lot of things to try and get him, you know, let him get to know several members uh, of the new staff. And so, uh, but, but I don't know if it'll be enough. And, uh, you know, I know LSU had the same thing dealing with, you know, letting their defensive staff go. You know, they had to, they had to build some relationships as well. And, and Georgia got in the, in the mix later than a lot of schools. So, you know, it's not like uh, it's not like Elko and them are playing from that far behind. It's just not what it was when he made his original pledge. Talking to Jason Howe here on Tex Ags Radio on the, on the Brian Foley Law Hotline. Let's close out with this because there's one last part of your most recent piece. I want to read it out loud, and you kind of just give me a, a few seconds on it. To recap, that is a five-star all-around athlete with playmaking ability on either side of the ball, a six-foot-six, 295-pound six, multi-sport athlete with offensive tackle potential, and long athletic receiver as potential late signing day class. So if they're able to, to seal the deal and close out these three, what does it mean um, about – and by the way, the, the names, I should probably tell everybody who we're talking about, Ashley Bethel yeah. Roman – um, and uh, obviously Terry Bussey is on there, and uh, Robert Borden. Yes, uh, I mean it. I mean Terry is obviously the prize. Um, I mean he he would be the headliner of your class. It would send a statement. Um, you know, uh, I think you know it would be it would be big. You know, um, for them to close out in that manner, um, and. Uh, uh, and, and add depth at offensive line. I don't think anybody's expecting Robert Borden to come in and and uh, start, or even even really do much more than be, you know, a uh, practice player or a red shirt. But in two years, don't be shocked if you're talking about that dude being a being a player. Um, and and Ashton Bethel Roman, you're talking about a tremendous athlete. Um, on the track who has, has, you know, bloodlines in football and is doing some big things and is just scratching the surface. Um, so all of those pieces are, are guys that can figure in the mix, whether it's next year down the line, but they, they add depth and you're filling out need positions, um, at, at, at with every one of those additions. All right, Jason. Thank you so much, brother. And uh, I'll be looking at my phone for updates from you, all right? Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thanks, man. Jason Howell there on the Brian Foley Law Hotline. Who is in Timpson with OB? OB will do the uh, writing angle, and uh, Jason will be doing more of the reporting slash uh, just taking it all in. All right, let's hit a break here. When we come back, we will spend a segment on basketball. We will talk to Tom Schubert, get us ready for the Missouri game. And after that, wall-to-wall coverage on National Signing Day. And by the way, I'll, I'll tell you this maybe when we come back, but some of the things we have planned for the show, uh, looking forward to that. Let's talk Heritage Films right now.
documentary films about families are awesome. That's the that should be the slogan. Like they're awesome. If you've never, and many of you have not, you should watch a documentary about your dad with your dad and with your kids in the same room. You're missing out on a just an awesome memory, just an incredible memory. My dad, as you guys know, had surgery recently. He's in his 90s. He's 93 years old. He uh, broke his uh, hip. He had to have hip replacement surgery. Got pneumonia while he was in the hospital. He's home. He's doing much better. Uh, but it was a scary time. That guy is resilient. His story is amazing. And I feel like I'm doing a an ad for my dad. But the, the reality is, yes, my dad's got the, the most amazing story. But Chance McClain was able to capture that uh, when my dad was 91. He, he went, interviewed him. He lit up the interview, asked the great questions, and put together a two-hour documentary. And then we got to watch it with my mom, my brother and his family, uh, my family, all right, my kids, my youngest, Isla at the time. She was probably eight years old. And uh, to be able to watch that and see his story, how he met my mom, how he escaped Q, all those cool things that he's been able to do. And we got to tell that story with the real detail, like the, the memory that my dad has about things that I could never rehash and tell my family. That's why we did a heritage film. And that's why I think you should be considering it for your family, for your dad, for your grandpa, for your family business, for your family ranch, whatever it may be. I think those documentary films are incredible and a real bonding moment. There's also the year flicks that you can do for the youngers, right? I mentioned uh, my my kids being there to watch that. We did one with Annalise, 20 minute video Q and A, just to get to know where she is at this point in her life. Fantastic. Chance McLean, does it all. He's very creative. The number 
All right, we're back here on Tech Radio. We are presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio Go Hour, presented by the warehouse at CC Creations. Today is our National Signing Day show brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. We are going to talk basketball for a segment to get you ready for the Missouri game. Then we'll get back to our National Signing Day coverage. Um, by the way, the Rollo Insurance Studio is the official provider of Tech Radio. The difference is real. They're an independent insurance company built around educating you on exactly what you're paying for, doing the shopping for you so that you can accomplish all of your insurance goals. Their headquarters is on Highway 6 right here in College Station. The number is 888-44-ROLLO or go to rolloinsurance.com. Let's go straight to the Brian Foley Law Hotline. Tom Schubert getting us ready for the Missouri game tonight. A&M needs it. Tom, good morning, buddy. Good morning, David. How's it going? I'm all right, buddy. So, you know, today's all about football, but there's a huge basketball game. And when I say huge, it shouldn't be huge. All right? A&M should be able to go uh, to Missouri and win that game because they should be a better team. Missouri is struggling, if that's maybe too nice of a way to put it, how they've done in the SEC. Yet, you don't think it's that easy of a matchup, right? I really don't. I think in today's game, it's so difficult to sweep a team unless you're just so superior. And I think Missouri played well when they were here in College Station, and I think it gave them a little confidence. And they are a type of team that they're a good offensive team. So if they're shooting the ball well, particularly from the three-point line, I think they can give us some problems. But I'm so sold on A&M's defense. Uh, the last few games, even though we lost, uh, you know, to Ole Miss, I just like our, our defensive stops late in the game. So I feel like we will prevail at the end just because uh, our defense is so strong. So what is different defensively? Because they're always a really good defensive team, but I feel like maybe they've ramped up their intensity and maybe the roles are a little bit more defined. I think so. Uh, you know, it seems like we've dropped down and playing the uh, – a larger number of players, which gives guys a little more confidence. They know they're going to be out there a little bit longer. And I think you hit it right on the head. They've defined their roles. And that's usually what good teams do. They get better as the year goes on. And guys understand what their role is. And they uh, they adhere to it. Uh, that's the one thing I, I don't like when players, you know, try to do something they're not good at. And that's a coach's nightmare. Fortunately, that's not happening in A&M. And I thought the last 20 minutes of the Florida game, we were as good defensively as I've seen in the last five years. They really locked in because Florida's an excellent team. Uh, that's the first time I've seen them live, and I was very impressed. And, you know, we go back to what a fine line it is in winning and losing. Florida could have easily won that game. Obviously, they had two shots to win it, and they, they had a couple turnovers late. But uh, that's what makes the game so exciting, and it's why it's so fragile with A&M. They've got to you know, step up every opportunity on the defensive end so they don't give the selection committee any uh, doubt that they're a tournament team. Tom, one of the things that A&M said yesterday is they're they're embracing these uh, close games. And look, that is life in the SEC, life in conference basketball. There's going to be some tight, tight games. But I feel like every game in a uh, for A&M in the SEC has been a super tight game. Absolutely. You know, David, college basketball is the longest running season, I believe, of any sport in college. So, you know, so many things can happen over the course of that three or four months, particularly if you advance in the postseason. Um, I tell people all the time, it's like life. You know, when things are good, it's, it's never as good as it seems. And when things are bad, it's never as bad as it seems. And that's what I would tell the A&M fans, that it's a fine line. I mean, David, two of the games we won, Kentucky and Florida, ironically, uh, Kentucky had the ball in regulation and turned it over. You know, if they make a shot, we lose. Our whole perspective of that ball game is different. The same thing happens to Florida. What if one of those uh, young men hit the jumper at the uh, end of the game and we're out over there, you know, second-guessing everything we've done? So it is a fine line. And the one thing I like about the Aggies, they, they really don't overreact. I mean, they know who they are. And I think they have so much confidence in their defense that they're going to always be in a ball game. Now, that scares me a little bit when you play an elite team that can really score. And I think you're going to see some of those in, like, Tennessee, <clears throat> excuse me, in Alabama in the future. But Missouri's capable of doing that. Uh, South Carolina, who's obviously a very good team, I, I wasn't a believer, but they keep winning. Um, they uh, lost, Missouri lost in overtime at South Carolina and played them tough at Missouri. So 
they're a good team. They just haven't had a lot of success. Their guard play is good, and they shoot the three ball, and they they have a good field goal percentage. They're two negatives. They're they're not a great defensive team, and they do turn the ball over. They had 15 turnovers against us the first time, and hopefully we can uh, turn them over again. I I made a comment if we hold them, uh, if A and M holds Missouri uh, or forces more than 15 turnovers, I think it's a no-brainer. Uh, the Aggies win the game, but Missouri takes care of the ball. I think it'll go down to the wire. My friend Bob Sacamano just sent me a text, um, and he says, track and field actually the longest running college season with basketball not that far behind. Uh, Tom, let, let's talk a little bit about the importance of starting fast because we talked about closing games, but A&M, for some reason, falls in these holes sometimes when they start off games. They've got to, especially a team that's looking for their first win who plays better at home, even though they haven't won in the SEC yet, you can't let that team get the, the confidence from an early lead. Sure, and that's where I think you've got to establish your offense a little bit. I, I wish we were a little more patient at times in the beginning of the game, you know, get a lot of ball reversals, some inside-out touches, and get everybody involved. Uh, when A&M does that, you know, we, we've got enough good shooters. I'm still convinced of that. I'm just sometimes a little disappointed in the shot selection. But uh, we need to move the ball. And I'm not saying shorten the game because I think we're the better team A&M is. Um, and typically when you have more talent and you're more explosive, you try to make it more possessions. I know uh, Buzz talks about possessions all the time. And when you're playing a really good basketball team, the less possessions you have, the greater chance you're going to have to beat them because there's not as much room for error. So I hope we're very patient and we get uh, some inside-out touches. Uh, I also hope we establish an inside game. I mean, I'm a Henry Coleman fan. I know he hasn't played much here recently. Uh, I don't know if he's injured or what, but he's uh, an excellent player. I've loved his attitude. But, uh, you know, A&M wins by committee, and I, they seem like they have enough confidence, David, that every time they go out, because they play hard and they're consistent and they play excellent defense, that they always have a chance no matter who they're playing. Talking to Tom Schubert here on Tex Ags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. I'm a big Manny Obasaki guy because um, I see something there. And we get flashes of it. We don't get it consistently. And um, who are we talking to? Yes, we were talking to, to one of our analysts, um, and maybe it was um, Justin Lanham, who said that you know he, he's not really a point, right? And that's part of the problem. Let him play more of the two or the three. Uh, what do you think about Manny when he's out there? I agree. I like him on a wing position where he doesn't have to be the main ball handler. Uh, David, I feel like some of the substitutes, you know, they want to play more like any person does that's on a team. And when Manny comes in a game, I think sometimes, in my opinion, he forces it a little bit. He's constantly driving to the basket, and he's dangerous that way. I, I wish he was a little more patient. But uh, one thing I have to say, I don't know if you recall, but in the second half, that Florida game, he was so uh, tenacious on defense, uh, hawking that ball. He caused a couple turnovers just by him, you know, getting into the dribbler, and, and they fumbled the ball, and they, they had a difficult time getting into their offense, and that was Manny. He's incredible on defense. So I'm sure Buzz knows his habits and his tendencies much better than anybody, and he's utilizing them in the best way he can. I just uh, wish, I don't know if you feel this way, Manny would relax a little bit offensively and let, let the offense come to him rather than him being aggressive and kind of drive in there and force the action. And that's, to me, when he gets in trouble. You know, he's throwing up some, you know, like uh, little short hooks and they're missing the entire rim and then teams have an opportunity to run back. I'm not trying to be critical of him, but I, I do love his energy and I thought he was one of the key guys in the, in the victory against Florida the other day. Tom, uh, are you still confident this is a tournament team? I am. I mean, I think they'll make the tournament. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind unless they just collapse, and I just don't see it happening. Uh, you know, you and I talked in the beginning of the season, and we were thinking 12-6. and six. I mean, I, I think it'll be difficult to be that good. If they are, there's no question. If they're 10-8 and eight and they lose to the wrong people, I mean, it's going to be uh, – uh, a very nervous Sunday selection Sunday. Ironically, I looked on a couple of the uh, bracketologies yesterday, and we were a 12 seed. I don't know if you saw that in several of them. 
So, uh, you know, we're right there on the edge. And uh, the 12 seed is a, not a bad seed. And the reason I say that, uh, as you know, you play the five in that scenario. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, years ago, the 12 was beating the five more than the five was beating the 12. So maybe we'll get that reverse, uh, you know, uh, draw that we had last year where we were disappointed with a seven. And that 7-10 game is a tough game, as you know, as well. So I think we're a tournament team. I, I sure hope so. It's going to be exciting. Uh, I, I can't wait till uh, I guess, what, it's a little over a month. Is that correct, David? Yes, sir. Tom, I, I know you've got some uh, travels coming up. Best uh, of luck. Enjoy it. We'll talk to you soon, all right? Thank you, sir. Tom Schubert there on the Brian Foley Law Hotline. Appreciate everybody uh, listening to that interview. And, yeah, if you got my Bob Sacramento reference, you are one of the few that gets it. Right now, we're talking about 12 under 12. Did you or someone you know graduate from Texas A&M within the past 12 years? And are you leading by example in business or in service? If that's the case, the Association of Former Students would like to invite you to nominate yourself or someone that you know for the 12 under 12 Young Alumni Spotlight. So each year, the association recognizes a dozen Aggies who have graduated within the last 12 years for their business accomplishments, civic or military service, philanthropic efforts, and outstanding representation of Texas A&M's core values, excellence, integrity, leadership, loyalty, respect, and selfless service. Previous year honorees have included leaders in business and higher education, architects, petroleum, engineers, nonprofit executives, physicians, and veterans, and members of the U.S. Armed Forces. So 2024, Nominations are closing in a little over a month, March 31st. So to be sh be sure to nominate someone very very soon. To learn more about the recognition and submit a nomination, visit tx.ag/slash 12 under 12 nominations.
All right, we're back here on Tech Sags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio. It is our National Signing Day show, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. And uh, it's the go hour coming to a close here uh, at 8 a.m. on a Wednesday because it's National Signing Day. And we're going to do uh, wall-to-wall coverage of Terry Bussey signing, hopefully with Texas A&M, in the next few minutes. Let's go to the Angry Elephant News and Social Center. Eric Casares. Scott, around the SEC for us. Yes, sir. So starting off, SEC basketball yesterday, number 15, South Carolina. They stay hot. They pick up a 68-65 to win over Ole Miss at home. Uh, also, Kentucky throttles Vanderbilt, Nashville, 109-77, without their two best players as well. Uh, so big there uh, in basketball. Good stuff there. Anything else? Uh, just some storylines. Uh, it looks like they – oh, never mind. Actually, I don't have anything. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's called the shortest segment of Around the SEC in the history of the SEC. Appreciate uh, Eric's good work there. A couple things coming in here. Dave and Temple, newsflash 50 years ago today, Pan Am uh, Yankee Clipper f- uh, Flight 101 from London Heathrow lands in New York's Kennedy Airport and Beedle- Beatlemania arrives. It was the first trip to the United States by the Beatles, a British rock and roll quartet. I didn't know that. That had scored its uh, first number one U.S. hit six days before with I Want to Hold Your Hand. Huh. Look at that. This day in history on Texas Radio. I bet you didn't know that was going to happen. Good stuff there, Dave. Thank you very much for the info. I'm a big Beatles guy, believe it or not. I know Nick won't believe you or believe me, but I am. On the show, the rest of the way, Bronny and Lucci will be with us. All right, We will have both of those guys uh, breaking down. Terry Bussey signing at 9 o'clock. We will talk about Robert Borden from Tennessee, who did sign earlier this morning, if you missed that. Ashton Bethel-Roman, I believe he signs this afternoon. We'll break down his game, his tape. Uh, We're going to talk about just the late signing day over the years. That's going to be something to to kind of break down. And then we'll kind of break down the best overall player from this class, this recruiting cycle, the immediate impact, the highest upside, most reliable, the highest floor, the fastest, the strongest, the biggest sleeper, the first off the bus. All that's going to be part of the program, right? So very good stuff there. All right, uh, that's going to do it here for the Go Hour on Texags Radio. Wall-to-wall coverage here on our National Signing Day special, the late National Signing Day special, brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. A lot more over the next two hours is Texags Radio.
All right, welcome in. Tech Sags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio. It is uh, actually our National Signing Day special brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. They want to remind you to have fun out there with Academy Sports and Outdoors. Ryan Broninger is in studio with us. Billy Lucci will be joining us in this hour at some point, and uh, we will be breaking down the latest news. Terry Bussey expected to sign here, uh, hopefully with Texas A&M in the next few minutes. Yeah, we're monitoring. Jason's on the scene. Olin's on the scene. Uh, Terry just showed up and is sitting down at the desk. I believe if you were wanting to stream that live, you can go to the Timpson ISD Facebook page, and we'll see how much their servers can handle because there will be a lot of folks in uh, Texas and Louisiana t- tuned into that one to see where he ultimately chooses. But we have maintained that the Aggies are in a good spot. Uh, we have not heard – Otherwise, and so, I mean, as I'm sitting here talking, this thing could have already happened. I haven't gotten a text about it just yet. Um, But, you know, crazy thing, you're never 100% in recruiting, but we felt good about where A&M was going into the week. Um, Didn't hear anything on the other side of the visit that would make us think otherwise. And it looks like it just went down. Terry Bussey signs with Texas A&M. The buzzard means he is ours, buddy. It's official. I mean, what a huge recruiting win for Mike Elko, for Holman Wiggins on the offensive side, for Ish Arstead on the defensive side, for Texas A&M in general. Like, this is a statement by Mike Elko. You can say all you want to about Terry Bussey has been committed to Texas A&M since September. But in this recruiting game, relationships matter. Yep. So Mike Elko comes in, and he's essentially had to go get Terry again with no background. So, there were a lot of folks, if you'll remember, when Mike Elko was hired, that had a very strong opinion about him as a recruiter. I don't know where that was formulated from, but it was happening on our website, on our message boards. And there's a lot of you out there that are listening to this that are celebrating like crazy because A&M just signed Terry Bussey. But you better go back and you better start deleting maybe some tweets, deleting some posts, Because this is an enormous win by Mike Elko, and you don't know. We didn't – you can say you thought Mike Elko was going to be a certain way as a recruiter, but you didn't know because this time here, he wasn't the head coach. He didn't have access to the stuff he's got access to now as the head man in Aggieland. And Billy just sat down. But, like, I think what stands out about this, obviously, Billy, is A&M gets a phenomenal player, Mm -hmm. sensational player that can impact both sides of the ball very quickly. But secondly – like Mike Elko is putting a lot of narratives to rest in a couple of months here in College Station. Yeah, I think he already had, and this will just this will get the attention of the casuals, as they say. You know, like anyone that's been following this knows that whether they got Terry Bussey or whether LSU got him, Mike Elko and this recruiting staff, this recruiting team, and with that I mean his coaches and his entire department over there that he's put together. Anyone that's been following this knows that they're going to be not just good, they're going to be really good here. And they're going to do a hell of a job. And like you said, he had not been a head coach here. He had been a coordinator only. Um, And you know how on certain staffs, how the structure, you know, how things are structured in terms of of, uh, coordinators recruiting and whatnot. He got to Duke and did some really nice things on the recruiting trail by Duke's normal standards. He did some really nice things in the portal to put that team on the field that they had last year before the quarterback injuries caught up with them. If you're following this stuff, you have no idea, you know, this would not have surprised you. Um, If you're following Elko and his staff's continued pursuit of Bussy, Bronny, we talked last night, this never felt like it was getting away from A&M. No, that's what I said right before. That was all drummed up out to to the east. Yeah, do we need to talk about that? We'll talk after, about that in a minute. Yeah. yeah, but this was all drummed up in Louisiana by their commitments. They had this push to say, "Hey, let's get off." I'm not saying LSU wasn't a real player. We all know they were, but on our side of things, this never felt like it was getting away from A and M. There was never any panic. There was never there was concern because they were recruiting an elite player, and they obviously wanted to get him in the worst way, but. A&M felt in control of this thing wire to wire, and it felt like LSU was drumming things up just at the slightest sense that they had a window. And that's what it felt like. 
this was an outstanding recruitment, really from start to finish, because you had two A&M staffs sign him. Uh, you saw what happened with some guys at the very beginning of a coaching change. This always happens. It's so hard to hang on. And, and when they didn't get Bussy early, some people were panicking. Oh, man, that's not good. If they were going to get him, they, you and I felt like that was fine. Because it always felt like Terry Bussey wanted to be an Aggie. He wanted to play at Texas A&M. He wanted to come from Timpson to College Station. Uh, it always kind of felt that way. And all it took, it, the new staff had to come in and, and win him over, sell him on the vision. And I think I really think they did that pretty quickly. And I think that's to be commended. And Nuno, this is big. Uh, for a lot of reasons, and I want to talk more about Bussy the player, but it was also big, Bronny. We talked about it on a couple levels. Nuno, care, would you care to? I mean, I'm here. I'm here listening to the to two experts. Go ahead. I'm tennis. Be the third mm -hmm. expert. Burn, I want burn. you to be the third expert. Why is this so big? And we'll, well, we'll I mean, if you look at what A and M lost mm -hmm. over the last year, they have basically replaced that. You know, okay. another five star receiver. And by the way, who can play both sides? Right. Absolutely. Where Where are some of your biggest needs? Uh, the defensive backfield, which they've addressed, and he can play there. Uh, and wide receiver was an area. When you lose Evan Stewart, you lose a five-star, it hurts. And from what I've never met Terry Bussey, but from everything I've read and, and heard from five you guys. Five-star character. Too. There you go. Yeah. And that fits into what they're trying to build here. Yeah, I thought it meant a lot of sense on and off the field. And whenever you're trying to change a culture and also still trot out elite talent and football teams, guys like Terry Bussey are key pieces to that. Um I thought just getting to know him, the very little that I did, but talking to Hal and talking to the, the folks in Timpson, I went out there and covered one of their high school games that was in the wood, their playoff games in the Woodlands, and just talking to the staff, like it just felt more like an A and M kid that was going to thrive in College Station more so than he would in Baton Rouge. Yeah, I felt like if they if they didn't get him, that was part of what was going to hurt more. Is you're that close to the finish line on on a special talent, a real character kid that just feels like. This is the fit. It's always felt that way, and I believe it's always felt that way uh, for Terry. You know, I like – so you to, if you were to lose a young man like that to a team in your own conference, you know, LSU's made such a big deal about keeping their kids in state. If you let a talent like that cross the Sabine and go over there and, and play in Louisiana, I thought it would have been – it would have made the loss sting that much more. They didn't lose him. They got him. It's actually now a, a big knot on the head of Brian Kelly, Sherman Wilson, who does a lot of tweeting in LSU. With that said, the prize for, for the Aggies is a guy, like you said, David, that can play both sides of the ball, and, and there are needs at both spots. And I know they went a long way towards addressing corner for sure. This is a young man that has the ability and the skill set and the, and the mental state of it, to come in here and he can contribute day one on either side of the ball or special teams. He's that, he's that gifted. I'm not saying he will. The opportunity is there, and I think he's going to be an absolute star in maroon and white. One of the things that I, was, I thought was really cool with this recruitment, and really it's more so with Terry as a player and a prospect, was – a lot of times when you come from small town Texas and you're highly rated, people will ask questions about yep. how are you performing against that talent? You know, is the talent level that you're playing against or are you a real player and prospect? Mm -hmm. So all Terry did was become a bona fide legend in East Texas, like put himself on the probably last two decades of East Texas, Mount Rushmore, Texas high school football players, along with like Pat Mahomes, mm -hmm. like, He's in Trent Williams. Like, that's where Terry Bussey's legacy. Yes. Yeah, like, he is of the elite, elite to come out of that part of the state. By the little guy named the name of Earl Campbell. I said Tyra the last Rose. two decades. But <laughs> all time. Whenever you look at what he Maybe. was able to do and go when he went to Orlando in the Under Armour game, and he goes out to Hawaii to the Polynesian Bowl, and he performs at that level, he was the best receiver on the field in the Under Armour game against the top talent in the country. So – he takes that small town narrative and throws it out the window right there. Yeah. Right, look, there was. A, are you going to a commercial? Here? No, we got ten. We got eight minutes. There's another part of this too. I talked about need at corner, need at receiver. I, I'm not sure as we sit here today, the need isn't more receiver. at receiver. Yeah. I mean, you look at 
all they did in the portal at corner. Um, there's real opportunity there. But point being, a, a five-star talent, nationally recruited, could have gone anywhere he wanted, committed to A&M for a long time, gets a really, really late push. Uh, let's call it a defensive player. Um, you lost Anthony Hill. You lost Harold Perkins late. Two rivals, one to LSU. Mm -hmm. I saw the tweets going out. Somebody was thought they were clever. You know, they kept liking old tweets from Harold Perkins on his A and M visits and the A and M gear and stuff, uh, insinuating something that never happened. And, and I'm talking about Bussy flipping. Uh, but you did lose Perk to LSU. You did lose Anthony Hill to Texas. Your rivals. They broke. They broke a recent little trend here and that that to call it a trend really isn't fair because of all the highly regarded guys and the major battles A&M has won in the last few years in the last few years under Jimbo and even in the first part of this cycle under Elko guys he kept guys he went out and got but this felt to a lot of fans and I followed it and and know how people were thinking a lot of people were getting Anthony Hill Harold Perkins vibes they were worried about that because it tracked similarly. What they, what they didn't factor in were the two big differences. It's Mike Elko and this staff, and it's Terry Bussey. He's a different kid. He's a different type of person than them. Not to say they're bad people, but he, he's just a different person. Those, every five-star recruit is not wired the same. And, uh, again, credit them for selling Bussey on the vision. Jay Bateman. Uh, I don't. It was. Holman I'm Wiggins. sure Ish was in yeah. Holman Wiggins, BGA. The the whole staff. Colin Klein was in home. Like the whole staff. Colin Klein could use him. To, imagine Bussy in that deep Kansas State passing game. If you watched them the last few years, and Bussy getting down the field or different ways, you can get him the football. I think even losing like Draylen Miller to Colorado, which I wonder if he's having any second thoughts yet. Give that some time. But even losing him, like. I think Bussy, that, that's that kind of weapon that they're looking for. Somebody that you can get the ball to a million different ways. Somebody that's instant impact. Somebody that can help you in the deep passing game and make plays in space you know, underneath. That, they needed a guy like that in this class, and they got one that's also, oh, by the way, could be you could line him up at corner and he could cover. This, this is the type guy that A&M hasn't had in God knows how long. You, you thought you hoped – Denver Harris was that guy, but they haven't signed those guys that physically and athletically can match up with what this league is doing at the wide receiver position. So how do they approach that with players in, in, in the past and maybe with this regime? Do they like, do you split your time in the beginning until you, we figure out? Is, how does that work typically? What do you mean? With, with Terry coaches. Uh, playing with. Oh, I mean, it starts with Mike Elko, right? And then I think it was really helpful that Ish Arstead came in with him early. And Ish was at some of Terry's games late in the season. Um, and then, you know, as you start hiring defensive coaches and offensive coaches, specifically your coordinators, they start building that relationship and, and trying to portray their vision for Terry on their respective sides of the ball as best they can. Because I think I, you go back and you look at that last little flirtation uh, that uh, with Dalen Evans in Texas. And you think about had Texas been able to pull that off, what kind of influence that might have had on today? Right. Was that like, just crack the foundation even a little bit more? Right, because mm -hmm. Terry and Dalen were really close. And I say, I've been saying, I think people are sleeping on the fact that A&M was able to get that one over the line and withstand that push from Texas, yeah. but also sign and get Miles Davis on campus as well. Remember, the they came in here, yeah. they all sat in here. Every one of them, and I sat in your chair, Nuno, and I interviewed all three of those kids all at once. And they were all kind of at different levels of where are we at with the coaching change. And I think that was the Mississippi State weekend. I think that's what I think that it was. was before that. Mm -mm, it, was, you sure? it, yeah. it wasn't. I, I, I'm almost certain it wasn't. I can't, well, you might be right. Whatever. It, but it but was it late was, in the game. It was late yeah. where there was there were, the losses on the field were mounting. Mm. They were getting a ton of outside pressure and phone calls from other rival programs trying to get them off of their commitments to AM. And when I talked to them, you just you do this for long enough, you get a sense for where they're all at with their commitments, and they were all at different levels. 
and you signed all of them. You know what? It's a good point. And I think it was before that. The only reason I say that is because I, I know it would have felt, we talked all of us in the lobby for a few minutes, it would have felt a lot different. I just remember, I don't remember a lot of that, but I remember that conversation, and it wasn't about, you know, Jimbo being fired. I, it was probably South Carolina game if I had. But it was, get, so it was getting late in the game, and I remember the takeaway, because you guys talk to those guys all the time and follow their recruitments, cover their, rec- cover their recruitments in the day-to-day with the actual players, and just getting to see those three together and around each other, when they did sign Dalen and hold off Texas for him, um, and they held off Texas for Miles too, but he just didn't. He was he, he was locked in. in. Yeah. But when they got two of those three in there, I did. It did make me feel a hell of a lot better about Bussy because I saw their interaction. It felt like those three guys were really, uh, they were really vibing. They were really, and by vibing, I mean they were like. Prior to that day, I mean, you could tell they were right. friends. They were legitimately <laughs> friends, and so you can do all this crap on social media, and you can you can start a. Uh, <laughs> I give Billy a look. That was awesome. About what? Just oh, you coughing, coughing, just the way he cut his eyes got me. <laughs> but I love doing that at lunch, or you know, anytime something. Just, um, <laughs> but just friendships matter, and mm-hmm. relationships matter. And, and again, credit this staff for establishing that with, with can I, Terry. Can we give Quigley. credit to the staff for one more thing? Well, sure, sure. Not sure. acting like complete fools. Well, that's, where, social I, that's media. where I'm about to go. So you're right. And friendships and, and what he looked to me like he had with Miles and Dalen and, and I'm sure other guys in the club. But that's the that's real. Putting together a a last minute social media push, if. I love the player that doesn't decide based on that stuff and just decides this is where I want to go play football. This is where I want to go to school. This is where I want my degree from. Who who gives a damn about this? It's fun. It's fun to follow. We're all on it. We you know, we all get news off of it and stuff. But to when I saw those three guys and when two of the three had already signed with A and M, I felt way better about that than hey, let's put together a bunch of uh, you know, a bunch of images and graphics on in, on Twitter and Instagram to try to get this guy to My LSU. issue is not with that with the fan bases. They no, I know. That's not want. what I'm talking about. That was coming from LSU staff members. Yeah, yeah. It was feeble and, quite frankly, a, a pretty pathetic display of desperation on social media, I thought. And I was so glad that the A&M coaching staff didn't behave in that way. Hey. Because and I just tweeted it. Hey, but LSU fans. Go, leave time. me leave me alone for the day. The fans can do what they go want. After, I'm not go going after, after the fans. Oh, I just thought it was – their fans can act however they want to, whatever. They're still coming after you, buddy. You what? can't critique Brian Kelly. You can't it critique – wasn't Brian Kelly that was tweeting. You can't critique off. anyone Starts on the at the top, Brian. Quit disagreeing and play along here. You're like, it's like he's – You didn't off. even let me finish my point. Well, it doesn't though. sound like you're going to. I had right. to step we gotta in. got to go to a commercial. Yeah, now. go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Ooh. Finish, go, come on, get it in. What I was saying is hitting post does not equate to desired outcomes. Just because I can tweet more than the opposition and I can get a purple and gold train going down the tracks well, is a kind gift. of a cool graphic, but we could do that. We should do that with a maroon train because we, we actually have the tracks right there. Well, but that's not recruiting, that's desperation, and there's a difference. That is, I, I don't. Yeah, they were desperate. Yeah, they were. They knew that they had. Well, they created to the up. graphic where they had flipped all these guys, and then I don't like Jordan Gilbert tweeted the graphic. I don't think Jordan Gilbert came up with that graphic or wanted to tweet it. No. I think somebody on that staff probably told him, yeah. "Hey, we made this. Can you tweet it out?" But you but came from Ronnie, A&M. you do know better than everyone that this that does that goes on a lot of places. Sure. In this instance, A and M was on the right side of it. They weren't the one frantically. Swinging, they weren't trying to pull off a last minute steal. We see it happen. I, I feel like you, I felt like it was just a little too forced. It was a little too, like, kind of obvious. It was a little too obvious where it was coming from. I, but I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of not as riled up as you are about that, which is rare that I'm not as yeah. riled up as him. But the whole thing of, of, 
LSU always interests, intrigues me because they're like, don't leave the state, don't leave the state, be loyal, be loyal, don't leave. And, and, and I, I respect and appreciate that about the way they can keep those Louisiana kids in state through different regimes. Yeah, oh, they, yeah. could be, they could be total dog water on the field. And still, you know, Curly, I watch yeah. I watch Curly Holman and Jerry DiNardo still get actual players there. But they do that, they do that. And on that graphic are guys like Relaford and Don McKinley. And, and I'm looking at it going, yeah, I get that. I get that. And that's exactly why A&M needs to keep Terry Bussey. So you can put all those guys, Weston Davis, Cohen Eccles. You know, Weston flipped before Jimbo was even let go. <clears throat> and Cohen Eccles, I don't, I'm not sure how much of a fight A&M put up for him. I know they went in-house or whatever, but I don't think anyone was crying over that one. The two Louisiana kids, I think Relaford's a great player. Mm -hmm. And I think Dom McKinley will be. And Dom will be. He's got so super high upside. Obviously, A&M would have liked, at least, and they would have they kept Cohen had he not flipped. But half of those guys are from, and even Jordan Gilbert, they're from the state of Louisiana. That's your whole push is to keep guys in state and tell them not to leave and not to go into Texas. But then you're trying to recruit Terry Bussey to leave Texas and go to LSU. I'm glad the state of Texas won out. And it's the one time you'll hear me say this. If they want to start playing that game, and they are, and they're playing it well, they kept everybody in that state this year. I do think they got a hell of a lot of help with Nick Saban <laughs> retiring yep. and Jimbo Fisher getting fired, meaning – a and M having a bad enough year that led to a coaching change, and you had to reestablish eight million relationships. The two guys we talked about are D Lyman. Oh, by the way, Elijah left uh, and didn't give you know Sean Spencer very much time at all to recruit these guys. They gave those two kids basically gave Spencer zero time with Relaford and like a week, two weeks with Don McKinley. So, I Texas and A and M both need to players like Terry Bussey and Anthony Hill and Harold Perkins. I don't want to see him in burn orange. I'd rather see him in burn orange than purple and gold. Now, as somebody that's wanting to see A&M succeed, if you want to go out to Florida or Tennessee or, or Georgia or wherever, I don't think that affects the Aggies as much. But if you're telling me you want to see him go to Oklahoma, Baton Rouge, or Austin – I say I want to see him in maroon and white, or I want to see him in burnt orange, yep. as opposed to going to those other two programs. LSU has enough talent in Louisiana and in the South. They make it very difficult to go into their state and get guys when they're up. This state of Texas needs to do the same and right. make it real difficult on Venables and OU to dig out of the hole that I think they're going to find themselves in after the start of next year. All right, instead of break, we'll come back. We've got Robert Warden to talk about. Um, we've got a lot to get into over the next uh, hour and a half. Ashton Bethel Roman, he cannot announce till he can't sign till he's not signing till later, but he can't sign right for a little. Well, bit. I have some more on that. Okay. Just go to break. And we'll I'll, I'll I'll fill you in during the fill break. Fill me in, buddy. Right now, Millican Reserve time. Farm to table community in College Station. They got homes. They got trails. They got wide open spaces, and their mission is to build a healthy community around nature. And they've done that by committing uh, lightly on the land that Millican Reserve is found on. They've created a sanctuary for family, for nature, and for community with those 2,600 acres of open space, those 30 miles of trails. You've got homes, you've got farms. you got it all out there when they want your families to connect with nature and with each other. They've got an extensive, extensive network of trails throughout a wooded landscape that includes walking and equestrian paths, creeks and ponds, and gathering areas. They're committed to maintaining and restoring that natural habitat. And when you go there, don't be surprised when you see all the white-tailed deer, the songbirds, the rabbits, and the turtles out there. And by the way, if you buy a, a property out there, Homeowners sharing a legacy of conservation, which means generation after generation, you're coming back to that pristine countryside place. If you do want to buy uh, a land out there, you got the creek, which, the, which is an awesome neighborhood, 10 acre wooded estates. You got the hollow and a private gated community, and the meadows responsive to that natural surrounding. Learn more at MillicanReserve.com. Again, that is MillicanReserve.com.
Some really nice beards on Twitter today. Tex Hags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. Rollo Insurance Studio National Signing Day Show brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Bronny, you were going to shed some light on uh, the uh, Ashton Bethel Roman situation. Yeah, so Fort Bend Ridge Point wide receiver. We've gone. We talked about him quite a bit. Signed with Arkansas in the early window. There were some coaches coaching changes made in Fayetteville after the fact. Um, so he filed for a release from his letter of intent, and it was granted eventually after it sat on some people's desks for longer than I thought was appropriate. But regardless, that's either here nor there. Uh, and he is going to make a decision at 2 o'clock today at a ceremony at the high school. From what I have been told, I think it's A&M, Alabama, and Ole Miss. Um, I think Baylor has kind of fallen off there, even though he took a, a visit to Waco last weekend. That was a day ahead of a visit that he took to Texas A&M on Sunday and met with the staff here in College Station briefly before going back to Houston. Now, I'm a little bit fuzzy, to be honest, on what he can and can't do today. I know that used to be a rule that once you sign one letter of intent, you can't sign another one. And I remember Zach Evans out of North Shore signing with Georgia, getting out of it, and I don't ever think he re-signed with Ole Miss. I think he just committed there and just went there. Now, this morning, speaking of Baylor, they had a kid that – his name's Josh Larry. He's at Fort Bend Marshall. He's a safety. And he signed with Washington in the early signing period. Obviously, Washington had coaching changes. He filed for – or he sent the paperwork in to get out of his letter of intent, and it was accepted. So he goes back on – the recruiting market, and at like 7.45 this morning, the Baylor football account tweeted that he had signed. So if the official football account is tweeting stuff like that, we may be getting an official signed from Ashton Bethel Roman if that in, is indeed the route he chooses to go later this afternoon. So interesting. it is a little murky on what is and isn't. Uh, I, I know that for us here at TechSags, our content that we put out will match – whatever A&M puts out. So if the kid makes an announcement and there's no tweet from A&M, then we will announce him as committed. Right. If A&M puts, football puts out something signed, then, then we will announce him as signed. I, I'm, just, we, I'm not sure on the rules just yet on how that goes, if it's changed over the last four or five years. We'll just take A&M's lead then. What we'll do you follow mean? their lead. Yeah, like, follow their lead. Yeah. But uh, something to – while I was talking there, made me think about this. The term recruiting, Billy, five years ago is almost a completely diff definite, different definition than what it is now. Yep. Right? Yep. Because you have to grade coaches in recruiting in 2024. So what does that entail? High school recruiting, portal recruiting, and roster retention. So really, recruiting is now a better term for it, I think, is roster building. Yeah. Player acquisition, player retention. But roster building, I think, is an overarching term that encompasses all that. So when you start grading what Mike Elko has done since he's been here yeah. just after Thanksgiving when he arrived, is that correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. So when you judge what he's done in three less than three months, what kind of grade would you give him on his roster building ability? Um. I give Mike Elko and the roster building and his staff an A plus plus right now because you look, you also have to factor in the time they had to do it. Okay. And okay, they had the, the same amount of time in theory in the portal as everyone else did. In theory. I mean, they really didn't because you know what goes on in, in terms of, you know, long term tampering and whatnot. But in theory, they had the same window, right? Also, though, remember, he didn't have a complete coaching staff. You know, the portal closed days after you hired Holman Wiggins. It might have even closed, yeah, it closed prior because then you had that extra window for Alabama players. The portal closed before he was here. The portal closed before, you know, Jordan Peterson didn't get to recruit at A&M, you know, for, in terms of the portal. So, and then there were guys that were coming in along the way. You know, how long did... Colin Klein have to, to recruit Lagway. Lagway a week. Week and a half. Week and a half. Yeah. So it wasn't apples to apples. And it certainly when I mentioned Lagway wasn't in terms of, of recruiting. We know that. Uh, that's why keeping a player like Bussy is such a massive deal. 
going out and recruiting and landing a five-star player like they tried to do with uh, Williams out of Alabama, right? That was that's next to impossible. So they they certainly had one hand tied behind their back. And, and by the way, at, they almost got Ashton Bethel Roman in that first window without a receivers coach. Yeah, they almost pulled that off. Yeah. So go go and look at well how how much they got in the mix with with a five star like Brian Williams. You know you they were fighting with a hand tied behind yeah. their back for most. Of this and I'm convinced roster cycle. If you'd have given Mike Yoko and Colin Klein a month to get after DJ Lagway, mm-hmm. I think they would have signed him. Maybe would have I agree because they they made up so much. Ground. Are you wrist popping? Yeah, because we went pop, so pop, long pop, the pop, last pop, segment. Pop. We're already like four minutes. We need late. a theme song where you're doing the. It's like a. It's like kind of a little dance. Good morning, Dalton. Put that hey, to music. Hey, your beard looks dark. Looks long. He's got dad beard. Yeah. Best beard ever. Little baby pulling on that thing. (laughs) Let's hit a break. When we come back, I do want to talk Robert Borden with you. Glypto Dalton. Isn't that like a a Latino dance that you're doing there? Like a. This is what. uh, Do you think he's cumbia? It's going to be me in Vegas. That's not a cumbia. I'm going to get a video doing this. In Vegas? Yeah. It's called the Nuno. Yeah. It's not going to be called the Nuno. People are going to be like, what's that? It's the the Yoda. The the, the (laughs) Yoda. The Yoda's like this. Oh, uh, sitting in the it's, corner. And it's the 50 cent. I had a buddy, and this is what he did every time I went out with him over the course of 20 years. That's mine. This is what he would do. This was at, at the bar. One hand in the pocket, and just this. Beer literally touching his chest. Just, you'd see him, and he'd go. <laughs> and he was so happy to be out. I'm like, how could you be enjoying this? You're not even talking to anybody. You're just nodding at people, smiling, holding a beer. And it never changed in 20 years. But he was like, you love going out. Just He's not talking about Seth McKinney. No, I'm not talking about <laughs> Seth. <laughs> when we come back on Tex Ags Radio, there's a text message I want to read. And also we'll get into Robert Board and that and more. It's Tex Ags Radio. Right now we're talking to send concrete lifting and support. You don't need to replace it, guys. You just need to lift it. 979-933-8527. They are locally Aggie-owned and operated concrete lifting and support company that provide an easy, clean service at half the price of replacement. They're problem solvers. So if you've got a terrible driveway situation, a patio situation, maybe your business has got some concrete issues where the concrete's a little bit too lifted and it's uh, it's a hazard for those who are coming by. You have old folks at home. You don't want them to trip. Uh, you can have it lifted. You don't have to completely renew your driveway and replace it. No, that costs way too much money. You can do it at a fraction of the cost by just lifting it with our good friends there at Ascend Concrete Lifting and Support. They are local. They are statewide. They are nationwide. doesn't matter where your issue is. They will come to you. 979-933-8527. They can raise and stabilize any form of concrete slab. And once the project is finished, the appearance is close to seamless to the eyes. Residential help out there. Commercial help. Industrial municipal. Remember, remember, it is a send lift, a fraction of the cost of replacement. You can follow them on, on Facebook and on Instagram. Call them up, 933-8527. Again, that number is 979-933-8527. Don't replace it, lift it.
Welcome back in. Hey, buddy. Texax Radio. We're presented by David Gar. You got a little little food situation right there. Is it? It's the Bavarian there. cream, or was it the sugar? Yeah, I couldn't tell. It was a little speck. Uh, we are doing our National Signing Day show today, brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. I do want to go to the Angry Elephant Academy Music. Academy Sports and, and Outdoors. outdoors. Uh, the right stuff, the right price. Isn't right that what it used stuff, to be? The right price. Let's go to the Angry Elephant News and Social Center. We got an appearance Love coming Academy, up dude. at Angry Elephant soon. Yeah, when is that? I might want to put that on the calendar. Yeah, we got two in the next month. So let's just get ready for that. Uh, Eric. It's my birthday month. You know Don't people do like that. that. Yeah, it's the, it's that's, my birthday month. That might be worse. It's my than birthday week. Over tweeting at recruits. Jordan year. What year would this be for you? Double Jordan plus. <laughs> well, I'm trying plus. to think about. Yeah, that would be 20. Uh, I don't think anybody wears that number. John Lynch? My cousin had a birthday. He was telling me it was the year of his favorite player. It was, like, it was like Jack Lambert or something. You know, somebody like tweet their turn like 50. <laughs> see 52 or 53, 52. You see somebody, you know, some old person like Jack Lambert year. <laughs> Eric, uh, you got a text. 80 year old Jerry Rice year. It, <laughs> loading. Specifically for Billy and specifically for Bronathan. Yeah, yeah. So the first one is uh, in regards to Terry Bussey. He uh, mentioned, 979 mentioned, so happy to hear that a and got Terry Bussey. And then the other question was from Steve from Call Chase. And he said, will Bussey help Connor win the Heisman Trophy or will Connor help Bussey win a Heisman? Uh, I like it. I like where your head's at. Um, I think Bussey might help Connor win one. And then Bussey follows it up. Look, you do. It's fun to dream. You got to have players to be able to even make those jokes and be like, you know, when you make a joke like that, Heisman for your quarterback and your receiver, you, you, it, you, as you're saying it, you go, it is nice to have really good weapons in the SEC and in college football. That's what wins you games. Yep. Really good quarterbacks and guys to get the football to. Watch his film. We all have. We could spend an hour of this show watching his highlights. Olin's up there today. He's going to interview just people around town. I love guys, Bronny, that when they come in, you could go to the hometown, whether it's 1A or 5A or 6A or whatever, and you just hear stories for days. You know who I, that guy is for me in my coverage? Who? Devon A. Chain. Yeah. You still go one. to Fort Bend Marshall, yeah. and they talk about him. And it, what I was thinking of is Johnny. You know, and what people were saying around Kerrville long before he was on the A and M radar. I used to sit there and do the tap show, and your front table, shout out front table, would come and bring me a, a burnt CD looking, you know, burnt DVD, DVD highlight tape of Johnny. I wish I would have saved it. You know, where you write on it in, in like a sharpie, and it's like a lot of trust. Johnny. That could have been anything on that DVD, and then it's in your possession, and you Jeez, watched it, dude. I oh, thank God there wasn't. I Man, I didn't watch the whole thing, so I don't know. But <laughs> I didn't have to because you watch a few highlights, and you're like, damn, this dude's different, and that's that's bussy. <clears throat> but I do like when you sign guys that are like legendary. From where they're from, and I'm a, a chain's a great example. Johnny's a great example. I'm trying to think of you know Miles Garrett was one of those type guys um, at at more of a bigger you know up there in Arlington. But people, you could just go ask people like for years they were following Miles Garrett. But maybe even more so, like Cedric Benson is a guy that comes to mind. Vince Young, Reggie McNeil, Javorski, like just these guys that. Whether, it, again, like I said, small town or not, that just, they've been doing it for years and everyone there goes, you know what, that dude's special. And they could have told you that when he was probably, I bet they could say that about Terry Bussey when he was a few years old, you know, 8, 10, 12 years old. Bronny, I, I remember talking to, uh, so you're wearing the Astros shirt, Correa's hitting coach that came with him from Puerto Rico. Frankie. Not Frankie. The other one. Now, Frankie was more like, I his guess, right his manager. Man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, his actual hitting coach. And I said, when did you realize that, like, Carlos could be, like, all-star every year, you know, top one of the top players in Major League Baseball, like, special? He goes, I said, when did you start coaching him? He said, when he was, like, whatever, 12. 
And I said, well, how long till you realize that he could be like this level MLB player, like, you know, one of the best? He goes, 12. You know, and that to me is like anybody in Timpson could probably tell you that about Terry Bussey. I'm sure there's a long list of kids that played with him and against him when, when they were like eight years old where that guy was just different than everybody else on the field. Well, I think that'll translate to A&M, not eventually, but from day one. Let me uh, read this from Pappy. Um, he noticed Billy got pa a haircut. Pappy or Poppy? Pappy Van Winkle. This is Ar Arturo, my man, across the street at the MSC. He did a good, good. job. I think I got in there right before Bryce Foster. Uh, yeah, it's good. I, I didn't get up in time to fix it, um, so I didn't, you know, I'm wearing a hat, but it's you know, I don't want to get dandruff on my shirt here. But they do good fades there? Black shirt. They do. All right. Uh, and my only thing is I, I, didn't, I didn't mean for the sideburns to get zomped off, so I feel like my face just feels weird, but those will grow back you in a couple younger. days. You look younger. You fade, look younger. But the fade, I think he did a great job with it. Okay. And then for Bronny, the nod to Altuve with the uh, Space City shirt. Hey, it locked him up, man. He'll Love be that. an Astro for the for rest life? of his career. Yeah, for life, for, for sure. But – I like that he'll finish his career in Houston. In 2024, any pro athlete that can play their entire career, like, For one. doesn't have to be Hall of Fame, can be just, like, all, all pro, all star, whatever it is, whatever league. Any top-tier athlete in any sport that plays their whole career in one place, and I'm not, it's not guaranteeing he will, but he probably will. Pretty damn awesome, and especially for Altuve and what he's meant to the city of has, Houston. Has he, sir, real quick, off topic, yes. has he surpassed Biggio and Bagwell as the greatest Astro of all time? He did that two years ago. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 wouldn't think, I, I think I Biggio think has the longevity. Question. Bagwell had a short dominance. Altuve has been fantastic since sure. pretty much that. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. And, but, and, you know, he's won two World Series yep. and, and took him to how many? Four? I do feel bad for was it the ninety four season we got canceled? The Astros were really good. They were would have been a, Montreal and the Expos Astros were good that yeah, year too. Yeah. Tim Raines. Felipe and, was it was uh Pedro no, it was Pedro and who else was it? There were that pitch. From Montreal? Set. Yeah, they had, Yeah, they had what they had Tim Raines, maybe Tim Wallach might have been on that team and uh was that Moises Andre Alou? Dawson. Moises Alou was on that team, yeah. yeah. Alou was on who? The Astros. On right? the Expos. He 94. was yeah. yeah what about my boy? Was Delino De Shields on that team? Uh we're gonna look up the ninety four Expos during the break. That would have been before Jose Vidro, right? <coughs> At second base, all star. Never even heard of him. All right, I heard of Vidro. He was slick fielding, non-hitting. Was he a second baseman? Yeah, but he, I think he could hit a little bit more. Ooh. When we come back, we'll answer the could, question yeah. about the 94 he Montreal Expos. We have a huge audience in Montreal listening. Hey, guys. And we will also talk a little Robert Bonjour. Borden. Huh? Bonjour. Bonjour. Hey. Bo <laughs> wow. Uh, hey. Where is Montreal? Was I near Montreal in Detroit? What's across the river there? I think that's Windsor. Windsor, Ontario. It's Ontario. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Montreal is up by New Hampshire. New York-ish, yeah, yeah, like upstate. Isn't Toronto by New York? No, yeah. Toronto's Buffalo. by Buffalo. Yeah. I've been to Toronto. That's why I said New Hampshire, Vermont is closer to Drake Montreal. The Toronto. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go to break. Right. Now going to break. Now we're going to break. I just said he's in the news. I haven't read. Drake's Sex always Radio. in the news.
National Signing Day show brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, Sex Ags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio. we got a very short four minutes before we start the 10 o'clock hour. We're going to go through some major talking points here when it comes to this recruiting class just to uh, satisfy Billy's uh, desire of hearing the starting lineup for the Montreal Expos in 1994. Moises Alou batting leadoff. Sean Barry, second. Will Cordero, third. Darren Fletcher, fourth. Cliff Floyd, fifth. Marquise Grissom, sixth. Mike Lansing, seventh. And why are they only giving me eight guys? Because Pedro Martinez is the next one that they missed. 94 Astros would have beat them, now that you say those names out loud. Um, I'm more of an 80s, late 80s Expos guy. Tim Raines, Andre Dawson, Gary Carter, Tim Wallach. Maybe was it maybe Delino DeShields, like a young Delino DeShields? From MLB.com. Light hitting Vidro, is that where you're going? No, no, no. That he didn't start with his career with Montreal until 97. Mm-hmm. But from MLB.com to speak to Bagwell's 94 season before it got cut off, if you took Bagwell's final numbers in 1994 and prorated them over a full 162-game slate, he would have finished with 216 hits, 153 runs, 57 homers, and 171 RBIs. He had 39 that year. Yeah. He, he would have – that would have been ever, yeah. best seasons of all time. Um. The best part about Jeff Bagwell is he and I teamed up to make fun of Seth at a Metallica concert. It just was natural, unprompted. Did y'all talk about each other's goatees? Yeah, I've made fun of Seth. We've heard this story a thousand times. You know which one we've heard from you a thousand times? Go ahead. Well, Elko said this. (laughs) Slosh Slosh said this. Slosh Nagel. Early. And and no one can't. We've heard those a thousand times, too. Now, let me tell you about the story, the best part that you may or may not have heard of. (laughs) Seth wanted a picture with him. And Anytime he goes real heavy with my <laughs> impression, means I caught him off guard. Listen, <laughs> Seth wanted, and don't interrupt the story. Just listen to <laughs> I, it. I've like, got something to here's read. The deal. There might be a person out there that hasn't heard I it. I haven't and interrupted if anything. And if it's going to make fun of Seth, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. then let me well, do it. Why are it. you coming at me? All I did was look at my phone. <laughs> so Aaron Torres is texting. Seth wanted a picture with Bagwell. And he goes, hey, I got to do it. I got to go do it. Will you take it? Like, please. I, I just, I can't. You know, and he's, Bagwell's just sitting there. He ain't going anywhere. So I go, yeah, I got you. So he goes, Seth gives me his phone. He walks over there. And Jeff's talking to somebody. So Seth's kind of patiently standing nearby. And then you, I watch him. And I stay 30 feet away. And I see Seth kind of ask, you know, and Bagwell's like, you know, yeah, sure. And they stand up. And I still... I'm talking to somebody else or pretending to, but I'm at the corner of my eye. I'm watching this whole thing, and I don't go over there. <laughs> so Seth's like standing there like this, and he's like, Billy, Billy. And I'm just ignoring him. <laughs> he's like, Billy. It was a <laughs> like, good story. It was so awkward. It is a good story. It was so awkward and uncomfortable. And if you know Seth, you know he made it 50 times worse. We got about a minute 30, or actually about a minute before we got to hit a break. But uh, Aaron Torres listening this morning. Tune in to learn about Terry Bussey. Instead, you guys are talking about University of Hartford legend Jeff Bagwell. Hartford. We've done a lot wow. of Terry Bussey so far. We're going to do more. A whole hour. And Terry, Bussey. Uh, Terry Bussey is the Jeff Bagwell, uh, 94 Jeff Bagwell of East Texas football. Except there was no strike. He's the MVP. There is. He was the MVP. All right, let's do this. We'll hit a break. When we come back, we'll talk Robert Borden. We'll get through the superlatives. God, I have to struggle with that word. Uh, we'll start off recruiting country the entire show. What's with the sleeves today? You know, like, it's okay. What's wrong with it? I never make fun of you because of your struggles with the English language because I know it's not your first. Are you working for American <laughs> Momentum or First National or... You know what? I will. S- <laughs> I actually have a business meeting after this show, interviewing for a new job. <laughs> the only Cuban bank. ABC in Brian 13. <laughs> sure, I'll go back. Oh, I'll work all those hours. All right, <laughs> when we come back on Texas Radio, we'll get into a recruiting country next here on Texas.
How about well, Morgan Walnut over here? Zane. I'm not processing his loan. No, no, he's not getting a loan. <laughs> Texags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers Rollo Insurance Studio. It is our National Signing Day special, brought to you by Academy Sports. Dalton's stuck. And outdoors. He can go out the other way. He can't get Crawl by. like We're a glypto, getting... Dalton. Recruiting Country, <laughs> presented by Cabrock Health System, a faster patient center revolution in care with two ERs in the BCS, the original 24-hour ER in South College Station on William D. Fitch, and the full-service hospital with ER in Brian on Briarcrest, online at caprockhealthsystem.com. Robert that, Borden. Before we talk... Borden, I didn't do this on purpose, but Zane pointed out. Red Solo Cup, I wasn't here yesterday. Toby Keith. Oh, yeah. That one hit. That one, that one hit home to a lot of people. You know, I was getting texts about it in the morning. I was a big Toby Keith. Anybody that's my age, our age, you know, like he was like maybe should have been a cowboy, might have come out like late, like in college. 97 So like his right? music was like – at its most popular, kind of started to get hit when we were in college age. Uh, I don't know, maybe high school. Maybe high school. Actually, that was high school. But uh, he's, you know, you go back through his, what do they call it in music? It's not catalog. Library, catalog. catalog yep. And it is pretty damn iconic. In fact, the fact that you guys played one song, Toby Keith, coming out of the break yesterday, and then went right back to George Strait is a sin. Okay, that's you're getting mad at and me. And it might be an unforgivable sin. So today I would ask for the rest of the show. Guys, it's not your fault. No, it is. Who else's fault is it? It's not yours. You just absolved yourself of it. No, it's not for their the fault. rest of the show. Can can I get Toby Keith and Bronny, what's your favorite Toby Keith song? I mean, mine for me it's should have been a cowboy. Should have been a cowboy. Like that it was is. his it best probably one. Is. Yeah. It probably it's iconic. Is. And- I, I I'm big in uh that's my dog in my backyard. That is a song. Yeah, yeah. It's a little more Brooks and Dunn. That, than, uh, there's a Ronnie Dunn there. Yeah. Well, um, I saw a news report on him too. last night from a few months back when he was fighting, obviously. Yeah. Um, and they showed a clip of him at some award show where he performed. And he's like, this is the only way you're going to get me in tight jeans and skinny jeans. And everybody started laughing. He, he had fun with it his last few months. Yeah. He, was, he was a fighter. So. I saw him there at o, when OU won the softball national title. He like was wherever the team was and mm-hmm. sang. Should have been a cowboy with them. And uh, well, One of my buddies had the ultimate. A lot of people we know, I heard you the other day, knew Toby personally. Mm-hmm. A lot of those Houston guys that we know. Um, everybody had great things to say about him. Uh, one of my friends, though, got a real treat, went to Cabo one year and just happened to stumble into uh, Cabo Wabo. And then randomly on stage, Toby goes up and does like an impromptu concert, a bunch of covers, which he's pretty well known to do. So anyway, just seemed like a really cool dude and, and a great singer. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, um, Robert Borden. Let's talk a little Robert Borden. The 6'6", 292. Yep. Guy can play uh, several places on the line, Bronny. You want baby face two ninety two also. Yeah, and and a, a, not just an athletic background, but a successful athletic background in lacrosse, which you do not see that cross over very often uh, with La- offensive La- linemen. Crossover. The crossover is what they call it, Nuno. Who's and, they? When you say they, the people in the industry. Yeah. What industry are we talking Banking. about? Ours. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good comeback. Um, but no, and, and that lacrosse background shows up on tape. It's really light on his feet for being six foot six and 290, 295 pounds. Um, one thing that I think is climbing up my personal ratings of offensive line play is just general inter- intelligence and awareness. And you look at his offer list, really prestigious academic institutions across the country. Um, so, and this is a kid that Mike Elko and – Adam Cushing really wanted. Yeah. They really wanted him at Duke. And they thought they had a steal there at Duke. So when they come to Texas A&M, they're gonna, they stayed on him. They push for him. They get him on campus for an official visit. Uh, they go out there uh, to the greater Memphis area uh, and sit down with him. And they ultimately get the flip a couple of weeks ago and, and then now sign him today. But I like really intriguing skill set here. So, agreed. Like, that, like you said, that, that combination is rare, and it speaks to, you said light on his feet, it speaks to the footwork, it speaks to the agility. Um, you mentioned how smart he is, but he, you watch him on tape, he's a tough football player, too. And, and I said he's babyface, and I said that for a reason. Like, that guy to be 290 plus pounds, 
And and when I say he's baby fat, that reminds me, we used to call Seth Baby Huey. He was just this giant offensive lineman, but you could tell just by looking at him how young he is. And it spoke to the development you were going to get. Like So for him to be that size, and you can tell that he's just a, a pup still, he is going to be a big physical athletic specimen along the offensive line. And, Ronnie, I think you, you hit on it, with, and I said this when they took him a couple weeks ago. He's one of the only guys in that Duke class that they said, man, he fits in this class too. I'm sure they, 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 they debated and discussed a few of the guys, but he's one of the ones that they said he really fits in this class at Texas A&M. I'm sure he was. If he might have been number one on their overall big board, you know, of guys they had. But if he wasn't, he was way the hell up there in what they were recruiting at Duke. He's one of the very few that they looked at and said, "We need him at A and M." And they went and got him. And uh, look, I think the finishing touches right there on quietly. We haven't talked enough about it. We talked about. Some of the big names that got away early. We talked about some of the big names that signed in the early signing period. We talked about the new recruits like like Robert and like uh, Solomon Williams, Isaiah Williams, these guys that they went out and got late. And then we immediately dove right into the portal. I'm talking about what we talked about. So I don't know if there's enough time put in. I think they signed a really nice four-man offensive line class this year. If you look at... Ivy, uh, Papa Afua, Brawny's favorite. The, the, who, 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 was he the first commit in the class? Dalen was. Dalen was the first commit of the 24 class. Okay, well, I think that four-man class there, okay, of, of Blake Ivy, who was a massive win over LSU, and then Texas tried to go in late. Uh, Ashton Funk, who... You guys at one point had ranked as the number one player in the state and, and a real player, and you talk about the intelligence and this and that. He locked in early and never never wavered. LSU, LSU Michigan, Stanford were the final, and A&M were the final four there. And, and then and Papa Afua, <coughs> who I, I just – I love them going up there in that Pacific Northwest and getting a guy like that. And with that, that's a guy that Jimbo and his staff were, were on for a long time. Um, and then add – a guy like this with this kind of athletic versatility, I think is a strong line class. Four man hall. Uh, you got to do it. You can't take a year off. And I love it. They signed this group, but then they went and got three guys out of the portal. I know they're all not going to be there <clears throat> for that long, but I think they've got great balance there to where these four guys can take a year, develop before they're thrust into competing uh, for spots on the offensive line. I think Cushing has a lot to work with with these guys. And I, I like the versatility of the group. They all I, – I don't think a fool will play tackle. He's more of an interior guy. But Ivy, Funk, and Borden can all play tackle, no question. And it also helps that when you're going and looking at the 2025 recruiting class in the state of Texas, it is loaded at offensive tackle. Yeah. The, one of the best classes we've ever seen at tackle. So even if you're not sure about the future of this group, you can go backfill it with tackle. some real tackle prospects. Yeah. All right, let's get through the superlatives. Best overall player. Whoa, whoa, you dove in. That, that was, yeah, quick transition. Easy, easy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's do that man, after. Let's talk about Jeff no, Bagwell. No, I mean. Let's talk about the bank. No whoa. signal. No signal. Just yeah. got off the highway. I didn't really, Almost yeah. passed the exit. Cut off a lot of why? cars along we've, the way. We've wasted 22 minutes with fun and games and old stories. Who? The people are Stop demanding. Stop the textures. I didn't yeah. actually read it. See, he's a, he is a slave to the grind. <laughs> Like you can't, you can't get it out of him. This, this, yeah. this these guys. Own you know what? Him. You may be my boss, but they sign my <laughs> there checks. Your boss is. Yeah. yeah. Now they, I'm gonna pull up the list uh, again. Yeah, we gotta do that. You wanna do the next segment and talk about something else? Yeah. Well, I mean, we really. I can do have, it now. I'm. We prepped. really have. Three I just had to pull it. We up. really have three people to talk about today, and we've talked about two. We're gonna circle back. Hey, let's do this. Seat. Let's finish this segment with Bethel Roman. Okay. Yeah. And if they get him. Nick, do you have that pulled up? Did you? You went to the bank and he took the producer title. Does Nick have? Do you can have Bethel Roman headset? stuff available? We can talk about him. Let this me get his tape real quick. Hungry. He I always am. has been. See, as soon as I sense weakness, 
Yeah. Coming for your throat. I don't care, buddy. I, <laughs> Give me I, I, we had a comment about... Like, You're like, I'll take the earpiece you remember, out. Yeah, I'm, I'm always ready to fight. Um, down, DDF, right? Down the fight. So... Dude, that's what? Just some alien you, stuff. No, right no, there. he's that's the second comment. He's been talking what? about Drake earlier, acting like he was completely oblivious to why he's in the news. Hey, he's a champagne poppy. He sings. <laughs> anyway, you were talking the other day about if if I said Bronny would probably win in a battle royal, and you're like, I don't know about that. Yeah, I'm starting to second guess. I, I think if I'm wrong. It lasts longer than 30 seconds. I oh, have, I have I no win. stamina. Anyway, what are we I, talking I about here? I knock you out within 30 seconds, and I, there, I've got no issue. If you Ash and Bethel me. Roman. There you go. So He's if A&M stamina. gets him. Dude can play all, all day. And, and mm. really puts a nice bow on the day, but also the recruiting class. I mean, this, yeah. he would end the 2024 cycle for Texas A&M. And I, first of all, I love, you know, I have a, a real affinity for kids out of that Fort Bend County, Fort Bend ISD area and you just look at how they produce at this level the type of player the type of grinders they are uh, i just think that the hit rate has is really high too much in that area too and, and so it's nice when they get i, I feel like texas a&m should kind of own well they do they, my backyard that fort bend county area and they've done better in in recent years but like you think of some of the guys you know the braylon addisons the kenneth murray's some of the guys that have gotten away. Obviously, the Matthews family mm -hmm. is a massive exception there. But, but Anais has been here. A Anais has been here. Um, but to let you know, this one, this they finish this one out and get it across the finish line, which is what we fully expect. It it'll take a little sting off the fact they didn't recruit John Paul Richardson. Sure. And and the reason I say John Paul is I say it for effect, but also this is a guy that is really impressive at the same high school. And like like John Paul, he's got a football playing dad. He grew up around it. And I love NFL legacies. I love players from this this district in this area. And again, like I said with Bussy, this is a guy that can really make things happen when the football's in his hand. When that ball's in his hand, he's uh, he's typically the best guy of the 22 on the field. And verified track times, mm -hmm. and he's still a little slight. He's going to have to put on some weight when he's here. But <clears throat> his dad, Mark Norman, drafted in the 2000 draft, I believe in the second round by the Baltimore Ravens, played like a decade in the NFL. Mm -hmm. His mom was an All-American sprinter at LSU and then I believe went to the USA Olympic trials as a sprinter. So wow. when you combine what the tape says with the projectable frame and then – the athletic bloodlines, like it's to me, like it's hard for me to imagine this kid not turn it into a player when you combine all that. And you know, there's a reason Ole Miss and Bama tried to move in on him late, and mm -hmm. people around the country started looking around and going, "Okay, who's available?" And they start getting wind of what's going on with him at Arkansas, and then you go watch the tape, and I think a lot of these schools were like, "Yeah, this I'd have to look this up." I and mean, maybe I can do it during the break. Maybe, it's but like four minute does, break. <laughs> does Texas A and M, the Texas A and M, if they get Bethel Roman, did they sign the top two available players in the state of Texas today? Yeah, you'd have to look that one up. I don't know who that's available, right. but let's talk. When's our, when are you popping? Uh, we've got two minutes, okay. twelve seconds. This class is interesting because you go through, and we got we got like. You break it down almost like three ways. Yep. The commits that Elko and company inherited. So, like, keeping guys like Dalen Evans, Miles Jones, uh, you know, Jernigan was a, was a huge one. Miles Davis. I said Miles Jones again, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Miles Jones is an Elko corner that he brought to Duke with him. Um, Miles Davis, Dalen Evans. Tristan Journey, like the, a, a lot of these guys that they held, you've got the guys they held on to that they inherited. Bussy now being one of those. You've got the portal, which is like 20 plus players. And then you've got the guys that they added, Brawny. And the players they added to me are, are an interesting kind of side piece of this class that you're going to evaluate them later on. And Ashton, Ashton Bethel Roman's one of them. Uh, you got obviously Solomon Williams. You've got uh, let me see who else, Bronny. While you're on your phone, help me out here. Isaiah Williams, Solomon Williams, uh, 
that you're talking about that last yep. couple of weeks. Yep. Keeping Tristan Jernigan. No, no, I'm talking about who they added. Oh, I thought you were talking about big wins. Well, for right, Coco. Robert Borden, uh, Isaiah Williams, Solomon Williams. Kendall Jackson. Kendall, Kendall Jackson. Jackson. Yep. Um, Ashton Bethel Roman. Who else? That's it. Five, five of them. Mm-hmm. That'll be a very interesting group to watch uh, as we move forward because the, these, that was that little group of guys that this staff went in and personally found, added, recruited in that very small window for a, a variety. You know, each one has its own story. You know, Sean Spencer obviously came over and, and Jay Bateman, and they were very familiar with those guys in Florida. Um, you know, Ashton Bethel Roman, we've talked about his really unique recruitment. And then, so, and then we just got done talking about Robert Borden and his commitment to Duke. So just a little piece of that class that when you combine that with the guys they had to fight and hold on to, Bussy, Dalen, Jernigan in particular, what a big swing in how we feel today versus what it could have been. Nick has confirmed uh, per 247. Ashton Bethel and Terry Bussey are the two highest okay. uh, through 247 from the state that of Texas. Out there. Yeah. So interesting. Yep. All right. We'll hit a break. We'll come back. We don't with have more. anything to do during the break now. The bathroom's right there. I know. Head on over. I'm not like some people in this office. I'll leave it at that. Go to break. You want to? You want to? No, no. It's not me. I'm, I'm <laughs> laughing. It's a good joke. Like, I know what he's saying. <laughs> Time to talk Caldwell Country Chevrolet. They're no joke. They're the place to go. If you wear a shirt like this when you go to uh, Caldwell Country, they'll take care of you. If you wear uh, no, the other thing you look ready to do is sell a car at Caldwell well, Country. Good. Yeah. Right? Like if I get there and you start walking towards me on the lot, I'm You're like, like oh, here know. we go. But you know you can trust me. If I Slowly there. walk over. Hey, what, what, what can I, I get you in? I hit him with a no hablo español. You're like looking at you're looking at a Chevy Traverse. And they looked at Traverse, Bronny. I'm looking at a Chevy Traverse, and here comes Nuno. Howdy. Hey. Beautiful how, day, isn't how, it? How big's your family? You, I can see you in a Tahoe. <laughs> Absolutely. Upsell. We got great financing. You're upselling me? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they do at Caldwell Country. They do a great job of it. No, they just make you feel welcomed. All right. I would, I, I've learned you from you. You might hurt their vibe. Yeah, I might mess welcome. it up yeah. there. But by the way, they got great deals. That's where you want to go. It's not a far drive either. Billy's done it many times. I've done it. Bronny's done it. 15 minutes, the very edge of Brian to the beginnings of Caldwell. Short conversation away. But you'll see the difference when you step on the lot and do business with the great people there at Caldwell Country Chevrolet. They're on Highway 21 in Caldwell, and they're online, caldwellcountrychevrolet.com.
Tech Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers, Rollo Insurance Studio. Ronnie, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked uh, Jason Howell earlier in the show. So he wrote in his thing about, um, in his most recent um, write-up about, if you recap five-star uh, with playmaking ability on either side of the ball, 6'6", 295, multi-sport athlete. We just talked about Robert Borden and Terry Bussey. And if they are able to finish it off with Ashton Bethel Roman, what that will say about Elko's first class to get those three guys when um, when it was a lot, it's more quiet for a lot of the other programs right now. Yeah, I, I mean that's quite out of necessity or quiet by the nature of recruiting that is now you know nowadays and and when most of, I mean a, a, just a rough number would be ninety five percent of your work is done, ninety eight percent of your work is done for a lot of programs, a hundred percent of your work is done in December. Um, you know, Mike Yoko, he he stepped into kind of a quagmire of a balancing act when you talk about roster retention and player acquisition from the portal and player acquisition from high school and holding on to the high school recruits. Like it's just kind of a tangled web of recruiting nowadays. But I think when you combine when you combine Terry and Borden, potentially Bethel Roman with also what they were able to add in that early window. And we Billy talked about that before the end of the break. Uh, yeah, like that group of kids is going to be super interesting to follow, because Terry obviously was would be, would have been a kid that they would have recruited anyway, but the other ones are like they had ties and ends, whether it be in the state of Florida through Sean Spencer and those Tampa the Tampa two, um, or it was uh, Robert Borden being committed to them at Duke, or you know Ashton Bethel Roman was a kid that the new staff came in and identified late and said I think this. This kid's really under recruited. He's in Houston. Like, do we have a chance? Let's make a run at him late. I, I, I would assume that's a Colin Klein thing because he was in College Station and established as the offensive coordinator when that recruitment really started to take off. But it's just an. an I've used the term in the descriptor "well rounded," which we found has been taken and used by other people to describe the coaching staff, but. Um, it's just like when you look at their ability to just adapt uh, in not only within the modern age of college football and recruiting, but also adapt within scenarios and, and redapt, adapt within recruiting pushes and ebbs and flows like with Bussy. Like there's a lot of adaptation to this, this coaching staff, and I just think that they're, there's much more of an awareness of dealing with the entirety of, of what it takes to be a college football coach right now than maybe we had previously seen under the, under the prior regime. Uh, in the next segment, I want to kind of break down this entire class, and we can talk transfers too. But for a moment, can we look ahead to 25 um, and how Junior Day looked this past weekend and just how it's trending? Yeah, it's. I told Jason, and I, I commented on it in our in-home visit this week, that it's more of the same in terms of the response that we're getting from the kids on these visits the kids the trainers, the parents, they all talk about the organizational structure of the day, like how there's no holes in the itinerary. They're always moving. They're always going somewhere. That is a like big time noted difference mm -hmm. with Mike Elko in charge. But I think they've set the foundation for them to have a sensational class in 2025. We know about the talent in the state. I think they're doing a great job of trying to re-energize their presence in DFW which for whatever reason had been severely lacking while also maintaining a really strong presence like they always have had, always have had in Houston. Uh, and so like when we're – Jason and I are trying to map out our visit schedule and trying to map out – all right, Billy wants attention. Go ahead. Tell everybody what you did while we – Ronnie, were, you understand I could literally have you ushered out of this studio. Do it. For you, all the yeah, I'd love to listen to what you – All the attention I want. Right. I, I was off camera – you couldn't handle a little off-camera celebration. You know, and he raised the, his arms like yeah, I wasn't he was on shaking. camera. No, I but looked the, the to sound. Make, I backed Ronnie on this. One. I looked there was to a make sound. sure there I was wasn't a sound. on camera. There was a sound. <sighs> I did not look. Do that. Uh, like, there was no. Play it back, Nick. Play, that, play it back, Nick. Play that went, back. Oh, Maybe it was a delayed bussy celebration. <laughs> I've been holding it in. All right. Do you want to tell everybody what no, you were celebrating? I don't. Okay. Go ahead. I forgot what we were talking. I'll tell you what. You know what I'm celebrating. I was going to get you and Ashley uh, Astros tickets as a as a belated wedding gift. We don't need you gave us plenty. But I, but I was going to I was like, you know what? 
that would be a great gift this for gift Ryan trip. and Ashley. I this is, no. wasn't really happening. This I is a swear gift to God, trip. I thought this the other day, and but now he is great so, at thinking of ideas. So I ordered execution. So I ordered them. And that was the celebration, but now I guess you and I will be going. Good. Uh, enjoy your day with Billy at the ballpark. And then the yeah. day after, it's like, yeah. oh, I thought you had kids hey, things. Ask him about his day with me at the ballpark. How was the day he at loved the ballpark? It. I got him great seats. Yeah. We watched he, the Astros. Well, we sort of watched the Astros. Coughed great all seats. over me. The whole and he, wanted to sh he kept wanting me to show me tweets and stuff on his phone. I believe there was a video of Olin in there somewhere. Well, really? yeah. he, he did invite me to go watch Zach Bryan that I wasn't able to go, so he does come through. He forgot to text me the day of, but... He knew I was busy. I gave already. up on you. Yeah, you did uh, give up. But listen, I would have gone. I would have left Horn by himself. There's still some animosity in this office over what happened with Detroit and Richard Zane. Yeah, there still is. He's carrying that around to this the day. The best part of that story of the I didn't know I had. I wasn't going to take four tickets. This is how Dan is. Do you need four or six? Well, I only need two. It's me and Seth because Steve. You know, well, I've got kids. He's the only person that like can't manage. Well, somebody All might, his kids are college and high school. He's got one son. Uh, some Somebody of us, might burn a Big Mac between here and Tom some Ball, of us so Steve's yeah. got to be. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, I've got kids. I've got, you know, <laughs> you're going to be gone for 24 hours to go see your roommate coach the first playoff game of the season. You know, anyway, Steve, way to go. I'm sure if there was a, <laughs> be me too. I'm sure if there was a bench press on the plane, he would have shown up and actually, gone. Yeah, now you mentioned it. So, anywho, that, uh, I don't even know where I was going with that. It's probably about Zane. Oh, Richard. Yeah. That I find out on the way to the airport where Holly's like, I mean, it doesn't matter. We're, we're not using them. Just bring whoever. So we get on the plane, and I see my buddy TJ Markham, who's worked at A&M and lived here forever, and uh, he's going to Detroit for business. And I'm like, he's like, what are y'all doing? We're going to the Lions game. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, you want to go? We got an extra <laughs> ticket. Sure. Where are we sitting? In the head coach's suite. So that was Zane's spot. <laughs> just get lit, not that TJ's a random, but just literally just handed it to somebody on the plane that just showed up. He's he's been walking around with it in his chest and shoulders. You can see he's he's tense. Yeah, I still. deflated him. All right, should should we hit a break so we can come back Let's and do break down teams. the yeah. entire class? Let's work on these lists, guys. Well, Shall we? I've already done my work. Well, hey, hey Brunk. Yeah, well. I'm, I'm supposed to play the game, too? Yeah, we no, want no. you to play. Oh, oh, I'll play the game. All right. We'll come back with more. It's Tex Eggs Radio and this uh, National Signing yeah, Day show brought to you by Academy Sports.
It is Texax Radio. We are presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Mm -hmm. Studio. It is our National Signing Day show brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. All right. We're going to do the support. All right. I can't help myself. That celebration was – I'd secured floor seats for Creed in November. Get him focused. Come on. we got to get through these. Hey, November in Austin, the night before uh, New Mexico State, perfect night for a concert. Go ahead, Nuno. Superlatives. All right. Super- superlatives. Thank you very much. Let's uh, get into it. As... Normally, I delete Bronny's emails. Let me find this. All one. right. I will ask Bronny who the best overall player is. So you want to put the qualifications on this first? Of people I'll allow you to do, do it. Yep. Okay. So we're going to pick a high school player for this cr- each criteria as well as a transfer portal addition. And I believe you said the first one was best overall. Correct. I'll go best overall. Obviously, in high school, I'll go with today's news of Terry Bussey signing. And out of the portal, I will go best overall, Nick Scort. I 100% co-signed that and actually wrote it down. Okay, we all agree on that. Let, let, let's, on the cuff, off the cuff, pick a second on each, in each category. A second? Yep. My second best high school player. See, this is where Billy does this thing where yeah, I prepped, is. and then now he's like, well, we're not going to do it my way. Well, it's fun. It's Dale fun. Evans. Okay. Uh, Blake Ivy. Blake Ivy. Okay. Mm, I like that one. Well, actually, I yeah. like. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Solomon Williams. That's. I have him for. A, okay. A little, one later. All right, and then next, portal. Next best portal. Yep. Damn, that's a tough one. There are a lot of options, man. Can it be Will Lee? Can it be Desrix? Desrix. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't think he would be my next best one. one. Can Cyrus Allen? That's that's actually, I, I'm gonna say Cyrus Allen or. I think I'm I think I'm gonna go Cyrus Allen myself. That's my pick. Yeah, I'm I'm tempted to go with the production of some of these guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go. I, I I think that Will Lee's a good player. I do too. I that's funny because again, like you always I also do these think early BJ, guys. I always think BJ May's a really good player. Yeah. But we've got other yeah. categories. That Instant we can, impact. Yeah, like, like, I'm just going to say ahead, Des Dave. Ricks to be different because yeah. I hope he lives up to his expectations. Yeah. Des Ricks could be an absolute star. And, and if you – there, I think Bussy's – do you think his biggest – you think he's a receiver? I think early. It's yeah. A like I, I just think he – I just think – I think if, if Terry Bussy starts making plays in practice – catching the football and run after catch and things. I think it's going to be hard to pull him. He's just I think he could really excel, but there's a world where you could see Des Ricks and Terry Bussey, you know, eventually as your two starting corners. Ricks is so young. You literally mm-hmm. just finished your run. Those that's two that's two five-star corners that you you know, maybe in a perfect world those are, those well, are your two guys. Well, maybe Des Ricks is the next one for me then in the highest upside. Well, did we do oh, instant we, impact. Yeah, we, we did instant was, impact. No, we didn't. We did best overall. Oh yeah, my he's, goodness. He's lost God, his I'm mind. all over the place. He's lost. All right. lost. Immediate impact. Yeah, immediate yeah. impact. I would go out of the high school ranks. I'm actually going to still want to Billy Solomon Williams. Okay. I love what he brings to the, to the table as a pass rusher and I think that's an a, a spot, a position that Mike Elko utilizes, mm-hmm. kind of that stand-up outside linebacker like a Tyree Johnson. So I think he can make an immediate impact in and out of the transfer portal class. I'm going to go Cyrus Allen. We, okay. There's a, a needed receiver. Yep. This guy's hugely athletic and has been productive in his career. Okay. Billy? Um, I almost went – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work him in somewhere. But in case I don't, I was that close to going Trey Jones. I, I really like him out of Central Michigan. He's like a grown-ass man back there. A lot of teams in the SEC would love to have added him to their uh, portal class. Uh, A&M, when it was, was first on him, that was basically like, hey, Coach Oko, you got to get up to Michigan like mm-hmm. tomorrow. This is important. Head man flew all the way out to Michigan. They got that one done. Um, I'm torn between – him and uh, the big old lineman from from uh, Kansas, Kansas or Marjorie yeah. Adams, because I think he's going to, I think he's going to compete for a starting job day one. Uh, but he's got to win it. There's a lot of interior linemen on this roster that have started and can only get a lot better. But those are my two guys there. And then uh, from the high school ranks, I'm gonna 
go the other way. You talked about Cyrus Allen, uh, and I picked him for my my top guy in the portal. I'm actually going to go Isaiah Williams from that standpoint of just the – there is a needed receiver. There's an opportunity there for a young guy to contribute. Small right early away. returns we've gotten on him have been really good. Yep. Really good. So I had Terry Bussey as a media because I think he's yeah. going to start. And then I'm just going to do Will Lee because I think he's a the blanket. somebody well, you can feel comfortable starting day one. class for sure. Okay. All right. We move on to the next topic, which is highest upside. This is where I'm going to go Des Ricks out of the portal yeah. mm-hmm. because I just five-star mm-hmm. out of high school, really hadn't tapped into it. Out of the high school class is interesting. By the way, when we said instant impact, we all left off squirting because we picked Right, right. right. I'm trying to yeah. pick different guys for yeah. all these categories. Um, highest upside out of the high school class, I like Tristan Jernigan's upside. When you think about how young he is, like he's going to come in. He could be a class of 25 mm-hmm. in terms of his age. But I think I'm going to pick Miles O'Neal. He took mine. Because I don't know if you've been watching some of the video that has been coming out still out of his private yeah. workouts up there. It's pretty sensational arm talent. And he's gonna and he gets to sit. He doesn't have to come in and play. There's some guys in front of him he can learn from, but man, that, that that's a big arm. Billy. He took Miles O'Neal. I, I did like that one. Uh, man, in terms of upside. I actually, high school level, I actually like Blake Ivey. Mm-hmm. I like that upside. And you mentioned him in another category. I, I really like I really like Blake Ivey in that regard. Um, and then out of the portal, I think I'm with y'all there. I think it's, I think it's Des Ricks. I mean, I, I think he's, he, you know, look, they signed him for a reason. Um, Alabama signed him for a reason. He was rated where he was for a reason. He would have played at Alabama. He would have competed to start this year. Um, this is, I think he's, uh, you know, he's got he's got an all SEC potential athletically, and uh, you know, Holman Wiggins knew plenty about him because his receivers were going against him every day, and they wasted no time in trying to get him out of the portal. So I, I think he's. Up there at the abs- very top, not only in that portal class, but just in general of everybody ain't him signed. Isaiah Williams, I think he's he, he's like certainly that. yeah. Okay. And like then that. from the transfer class, try to be different than you guys have mm-hmm. picked up there. Let's go with. Uh, can we go Scooby? Yeah, I actually like that because yeah. like athletically, Scooby Williams is extremely gifted. There's no question about his raw athletic ability. Can they get it? Can they tunnel it a little bit better? Yeah. Yeah, Like if they can, like he is cut of the same cloth athletically as Edron Cooper. Yep. Most reliable. Is that where we're going? going. Most reliable. Yeah. So to me, that's highest floor. Okay. Like you can bet that this guy's going to. I'll tell you mine on that one out of the portal. Then we can go on so we don't waste time on pick my class. Out of the portal for me, that's where I put in a Trey Jones. Okay. That's where he goes. I'm going to Ricky Wright out of the portal there. Love that one, by the way. Yeah. I love them taking guys with with versatility in Elko's defense, like can kind of move them closer to the line of screen. Like guys like him and Saunders, the other really big safety that they signed in the portal. I, and out of the high school class, my highest floor is Ashton Funk. I mm. would just bet on that That's guy playing one. multiple years in the SEC. That's a really good one. Can I put Blake Ivey there? I mean, you can do whatever you want. Right. It's your pick. I'm going to copycat Is yeah. that what you're saying? No, did you do him? No, he did we, for the we, last we category. We used him. Well, I mean, sorry, I hadn't used him. I mean, we're running out of people. You're going to have a 100-person class. And yeah, then – might. They're pretty close. I mean, it's like 40 guys. And, but well, you got to do 20 and – about 20 and 20. Go ahead. So, what's the next one? Let's go. Oh, with, you got to pick out of the uh, – Yeah. He's kind of made him pick somebody else. Goes, yeah, thank you. To uh, I'm going to go B.J. Mays. I like B.J. Mays. Like, I think B.J. Mays is going to play, and I don't think enough, enough people are going to talk about it. He may show up in one of my I think he's categories. a great chance to start, yeah. actually. Um, for me, damn, Brody, I think your pick is really good at, at the high school level. There's another one out there that I think is going to play, man. I think he's going to play a bunch of football at a and If he'll ride I, it out, he probably won't play early, but I think he's going to play a lot of football. I think Another from, in-state kid. For me, uh, from that standpoint, shoot, I might go – pick Funk. I might go uh, – 
I like Miles Davis. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Like, I think Miles Davis, like, you watch his tape, you meet him, the personality. Uh, if he gets to where he's playing and starting and, like, proving it out there on the field to his teammates in that locker room, he's got real leadership potential. Um, he's just got that that personality to him. He's got that confidence. Uh, yeah, I, I like I like Miles. And, and, man, I just think you fast forward a couple of years in Tommy Moffitt's weight room and what he'll look like physically combined with how he plays the game. I, quietly, man, they did really good at high school to get the safeties like him and Jordan Pride. It's another high school, too, that puts out high, high hit rate players at the college level. Converse yeah. Jackson. Yeah. All right. Um, let's now go to fastest. So fastest to me can be track times or when you turn the tape on because okay. right? there's two different things. For me, in the high school class, it's hard not to argue with Ernest Campbell. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, that's what I have wrote down here. Yeah, I mean, that's just – that's raw, un, unadulterated speed. Uh, out of the transfer portal class, I actually – I'm going to go with Jabri Barber. Okay. Because when I watch the tape, I don't know what he runs the 40 in, and Cyrus Allen may be faster than him, but Jabri Barber's play speed, to me, when I watch it, is really high. Well, how about Ashton Bethel Roman if he does sign there? I like that too. Yeah. Hey, I would have Ernest Campbell higher than him, but he's certainly in the conversation. I think they I have here in the notes four three. Yeah, and he's got verified track times too. Yep. I had to get in. I'm not going to so go. Armaj, everybody gets drafted. I'm not going to go. Armaj Reed Adams. I'm I'm looking at the list here. You know what I'm going to say? A little different. I'm going a different way in the portal, and I'm. I'm going to say uh, – I'm going to go with Cassius Howell. And by that, I know he's not – obviously, he's not the fastest. Play speed. His quickness yep. it, it, for his position, how he plays in games with pads on, his speed at his position, and the problems that his speed and quickness are going to cause uh, opposing offensive linemen, that's where I'm going to call him the quote-unquote fastest. And I think rightfully so, we're talking so much about Scorton. This was a massive get. I believe this guy's a disruptor. Mm -hmm. And and guys, like, they're going to have to get something in the way of Cassius Howell, and you mentioned Solomon Williams, and also, you know, Malik Silla, Eni White, who's coming off the ACL. Those guys, uh, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting somebody, an edge. Uh, Rylan Kennedy. Rylan Kennedy, 15, yeah. <laughs> That's five guys, five players there that I think will have a real chance to contribute in that, in that category. But, yeah, for me it's Cassius Howell. And then out of high school, I mean, you both said them. Ernest Campbell and, uh, and yeah, Ash you. and Bethel Roman. I mean, those, those guys can just flat out go. All right, let me do this. Let me hit a break here. Um, we'll come back. We'll finish the last couple of, of these. We'll get into that here. But right now we're talking QC Kinetics. If you're tired of achy joints and dread the idea of surgery, you need to call QC Kinetics and do that today. The uh, state of healthcare is always changing. So what you want to do is not get steroids, not get surgery out there. You want to go somewhere where they give you options and they take care of you and something that's going to be lasting relief. And that's what they do with regenerative medicine there at QC Kinetics, transforming lives with innovative, non-surgical, drug-free treatments that deliver lasting results. So knee pain, that's not good. Get it uh, fixed right now. Back pain, obviously, shoulder pain. If you've got arthritis issues as well, if you've got another type of injury, don't let that pain keep you from living the life that you want to live. Doing the outdoor activities that you like to do, hanging out with your family. QC Kinetics has got the advanced state-of-the-art treatments, harnessing and directing your body's natural ability to restore and repair that damaged tissue out there. A very revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. Make 2024 uh, the year that you reclaim your mobility, reclaim your independence, walk and run and play and live without the danger of trauma and surgery and without harmful drugs. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. All you got to do is call them up at 979-452-6000. QC Kinetics. 979-452-6000. That is 979-452-6000.
Texas Radio, presented by David Gardner Shields, Rollo Insurance Studio, our National Signing Day special brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It's time to end the day with Double Dave's caller number 12 at 979-693-1150. We're going to hook you up with your choice of a dozen pepperoni rolls or a large one-topping pizza from Double Dave's that has been serving Aggieland since 1984 with your favorite pizza and world-famous pepperoni rolls. Reliable in-house delivery, bringing piping hot goodness straight to your door. Just click DoubleDaves.com, and your favorites are on the way. we got five minutes to close out the show, gentlemen. we got a couple categories left here to do. So let's do the strongest of the crew, Bronny. High school, Papa Fua. Okay. Portal, Rodas Johnson. Rodas, he does play strong. And I think, you know, I don't know if it's, I don't, I don't want to say it's an up, you know, upgrade over an Isaiah Rakes. Because I thought Rakes was underrated guy. But, I, man, he's played a lot of football at Wisconsin. That's a really big dude. Played in the trenches in the Big Ten. I'm with you on that out of the portal. Um, and I, 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 I'd I, like to change it up, make a different pick. But Papa Fu is exactly who I think of. When you watch him play and you see that frame and what he's going to turn into, like, you know, um, how much did Papa weigh? He doesn't weigh. He, he doesn't weigh three thirty right now. He he'll probably get back to three thirty. But he was like three fifty as a sophomore and dropped a bunch of weight and is now kind of reshaping himself. He reminds me of a guy like again, and, I, and I'm probably I'm probably cheating because you know he's from that area. But there were a lot of dudes I would taken off that Washington O line this year. And by the way, two of them transferred to Ole Miss. I mean, it's just wild. What they where they're spending their money in the portal. It's going to be a really interesting case study on, on their approach because their high school recruiting leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, but he reminds me of, like one of those guys that played at Washington these last couple of years, where you watch them and they're they're really big, physical at the point of attack. They've got some real pop to them. No pun intended, Papa. But also can move for guys that size. I'm excited about him in that class. I, I really was when they got him, when he didn't waver at all, like the whole thing I thought was significant. Can I go Kendall Jackson here? Sure. I don't think we've good. said him yet. Yeah, um, good call. Good and call. Uh, I'm excited about him. And then from the transfer class, let's see, I have written down here. I'll just go with Armage. Reed Adams. Yeah. yeah. Another good one, man. No. Moose people. All right. Uh, you, did you do yours? Yeah. Okay, my bad. Sleeper. Biggest sleeper. Uh, out of the high school class, I just when I think sleeper is like who's a guy we're not talking about that we think yeah. is going to be a good player. Out of the high school class, I'm going Jordan Lockhart. Okay, I think he almost won my highest floor. Something we talk about him a lot uh, out of Cali was pretty locked in through the coaching change, and so probably didn't get the amount of attention he deserved. Mm-hmm. Uh, really good player with a lot of intriguing qualities, and I like the way he's wired. He's, got, Dude, he's built like Aaron Hansford was when he went out of here. And today. he's got some real leadership qualities, potential great locker room presence throughout yep. his career. Uh, so I like Jordan Lockhart as my biggest sleeper out of the high school ranks. Out of the transfer portal ranks, this is funny to me because of the position that he's at. But I think EJ Smith's going to play some. Okay. I, think, I don't think it's – I mean, you only have four scholarship backs. Yep. And, and I just like what he good. does out of the backfield and as versatile as Colin Klein wants to be. And we know Ruben Owens is a great receiver. Uh, but EJ's got some real qualities, man. And, and I just there, – there's stuff he can do that I think is different than uh, Amari and Le'Veon and Ruben. So, I, I'm intrigued by him adding him to the, the running back room. Minute 30 left. I think EJ's a guy, by the way, that can – that can really help you out in in terms of versatility and Colin Klein's offense blocking receiving. My sleeper is from from the portal God, ranks. I miss one. Since no. you do that, my sleeper from the from the portal ranks is actually going to be where where is he? Alex Howard out of Youngstown State. Early you pickup. I was going to say Marcus Ratcliffe. Okay. Early pickup, really quiet uh in terms of it, it happened kind of right when that portal opened, but he's a guy that, that he's big and he's fast and he's productive. And it's a position of need, so I, I'm gonna go him uh, out of the high school, out of the high school ranks. Who did I pick there? I went with uh, real quick. I went with Solomon quick. Williams. I went with 
as a sleeper. Yeah. Okay. I went because with, there's so many good guys on the line. I think people forget. I went with him. Eric Carner. We right. haven't talked about him much. And, and remember when he committed? We just really liked his yeah. his tape as a pass catcher. I think he's got a frame that can get really big. Uh, I like that addition, yeah, too. Yeah, we, we, the dancing By the way, is happening. Garrett Miller about, was my transfer guy. Talk about running backs. Uh, uh, Le'Veon Moss has been really engaged and doing a great job. Just that's something I heard yesterday that yeah. I know the listeners would appreciate. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Bronny. Yep. We ran out of time, guys. Good stuff. 2 o'clock, Ashton Bethel Roman. All right, 2 o'clock. More Jeff Bagwell talk tomorrow. That and much, much more. Thanks so much for watching and listening. I bothered by that, wasn't I don't it? know. It's just the, fun. The, the it's text just fun has got him. We gotta, they didn't text.